Good morning, folks. Welcome to Whatever Wednesday, which, for once, is not just an excuse to play Hydrogenator, which it will be again soon, but we're going to be playing a new, like, a, a legitimately new game today. <laughs> it's not just new to me. It's It came out uh, in mid-November, and it came out out of nowhere, <laughs> and I've been struggling to react to it properly because it's I'm uh, just really excited but anyway that aside we're gonna be starting to play shadows over loathing today I'll explain more about what like loathing is after we get going in the game at support while we're playing the game but it's basically just like a goofy like RPG kind of deal and this one It's based on the no, the Kulu myth, mythos, like like shadows over like Innsmouth and stuff like that, that kind of deal. So, but before we begin doing goofy stuff, and my OBS's um, connection thing is putting on a fucking light show for me, thanks Comcast. Um, before before that, I'm still fundraising for my friend Hotchko, try to help him get back on his feet. If you're able or willing to, I have the, his GoFundMe link below the stream on like an, info, an infographic made by the lovely Orion. I also have a chat bot that shares the link every so often. I have a chat link that also shares my Discord every so often, in case you want to catch my Go Lives a little easier than Twitch. And but like on my layout, I also currently have Hotchko's GoFundMe links if you'd like to see it that way <laughs> any way you choose to help your support is greatly appreciated alrighty let's begin I downloaded this game like literally after stream yesterday thankfully it's like extremely uh, like not even a gig so it didn't take very long at all but I get the stuff fall. I should have all the source all set up and all that. Um, there it is. Hmm. All right, I'm sure this is all fine. All right. <laughs> w S A D. It's how it moves, company. It's how you move. <laughs> we got a newspaper on our face. This will probably be useful information if you can see it. You hear the sounds of a diner behind you. Maybe someone there could help you with your little magazine on the face problem. Or I could give up. Surely it's. <laughs> you just give up on life. <laughs> Alright, that's already really good. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. This smells like a diner, and it smells like they're open. If they don't have a no shirt, no shoes, magazine stuck in your face, no service sign posted. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see one. The Nightingale Diner. <laughs> just watching the character, just like, eh? Oh, I really like the music already. Try coffee, you'll like it eventually. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess let's try talking to this person. I'm not talking to you until you wipe that look off your face. The copy of Look Magazine that's stuck to your face. Bathroom's in the back. She points over to the right, as far as you know. Thanks. <laughs> the Nightingale welcomes all travelers. Nightingale says trans rights. Uh, pie. Restroom. It's the bathroom, probably. You blunder your way into the bathroom, eventually find the sink. After fumbling with the faucet for a while, you manage to disentangle yourself from the mirror. You stare into the mirror, revealing. Yes. Oh, we can choose our face! Oh, 
Honestly, I'm fine with just like this one. <clears throat> like, this one's pretty neutral in general, so I'm fine with just that one. There you are! <laughs> oh, yeah, this music so far is real good. Oh, they've got one of those new meat operated multi selection photographs, or jukeboxes, the kids call them. Neat! Hey, there's something in the coin return. <laughs> we got one meat. Mmm. Delicious. A couple older folks are having an animated discussion, but well, one of them is. Hmm. <laughs> the way these young women act these days, with their short hair and their sassy talk and their dresses that don't even cover their. their. ankles? It's scandalous! <laughs> And those dances that do flying around like I don't know what. Out of thought, prohibition would have put Hello, the kibosh on this sort of tomfoolery. But no, sir. Good morning, Ventus. Thanks for joining me for this goofy ass game I'm starting today. Can't imagine dancing a waltz to the music they're playing nowadays, though. And that's the problem right there. This newfangled jazz music with all the drums and and clarinets and such. Gap. Hello, hug dispenser. Welcome. We are starting Shadows Over Loathing. And the clarinets and such. What kind of word is that anyway? Jazz. I think our cups got switched. You're supposed to be drinking decaf. <laughs> Some petty vandal has scratched the name Dan Bob on the surface of this table. Oh, fucker. Alright, well, let's see what this person has to say. This man is concentrating very hard on his coffee. I will oh. not stand for jazz slander. <laughs> not stand for jazz slander. Thank you so much again. Six months in a row. Uh oh. I'm surprised you put you've put up with me for that long, but thank you. <laughs> this man is concentrating very hard on his coffee. Hey there, is there something particularly interesting about that coffee? It's my first one of the day. No, it's my first coffee ever. Oh, what do you think? I think it's a bad beverage. It's bitter and it makes my stomach hurt. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, it's not for everyone, I guess. Yeah, I think I'll have another one after this, though. And then maybe every morning for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, enjoy! <laughs> Duly noted. Well, now, that looks much better. I'm Ethel. Uh, well, I have an idea for a name. Mar. Mar who? Martini. Martini. I'm Martini. Still sick? Oh, they totally okay. I totally understand. Hope you get better soon, there, friend. If hey, if I can help you not help you not off while you're dealing with the sick bullshit, I'm totally happy with that too. Pleased to meet you, Martini. What can I get you? <laughs> Does the bush the bu the bus to Ocean City pick up here? Sure does. Should be here any minute. Good thing too. I hear we're in for rain tonight. What takes you to Ocean City? My uncle lives there. I got a letter from him. He wants me to help him with something. That's the that's a reason, hun. But it's someone else's reason. What's your reason? I uh uh uh. <clears throat> I just really want to help. Your uncle must be pretty important to you. Everyone who needs help deserves help. You gotta perk scouts on her. Well, isn't that sweet? The world needs more folks like you, I think. Oh, uh, scouts on her? Oh, you believe that one good turn for another uh, leaves the whole world kind. You just love helping people. <laughs> that probably that perk will probably come into play later, like some dialogue options. <laughs> so that says, meat only, no credit. Alright. A couple of young women are chatting breezily over coffee. Hey Mac, what town is this? Poughkeepsie. Are you two traveling? Yeah, Ocean City's turning into a real sawmill. So we boosted our jelly beans breezer for a week and whirl to the hot potato. Oh Bushka, you make it sound like we went south with it. I flew him I flew him a kite, everything's Jake. Jeez, I'm pretty sure I'm only three years three or four years older than you two, but I barely understand what you're saying. What are you, a cancelled stamp? Go put some pepper in your shoes. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> well, we could spin our one meat that we found in the coin return on a song, but nah. Let's, uh, not. I just said the bus will be here any minute. Go out and wait for it. The prologue.
You pulled up you pull out the letter you got from Uncle Murray and read it again. Murray Morris. C O Murray's and Antiques. One 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 Plunkett Street, Ocean City. Dear Mar, I hope this letter finds you well and I hope it finds you quickly. Something quite serious has happened, and I need to help with your adventurous spirit adventuresome spirit. Come to my shop at Ocean City as soon as you are able, please. Your Uncle Murray. Why is it, there's a clown? Oh god, there's a clown on the bus. You're just about to go mad from the monotony of this ride when the bus suddenly jud judders to a stop. You look out the window expecting to see the sights and sounds of Ocean City, but instead you see an in endless expanse of extremely wet trees. Uh-oh. It's the bus driver. What's going on? It doesn't look like Ocean City. Nope, sorry about this, but we're out of gas. Aw, oh, jeez, you didn't fill up before we left? I filled up the bus, but this trip took exactly one full tank of gas. Plus one additional can. Swell. What, why do I have to go get it? Well, I'd go myself, except for two reasons. Those being, firstly, being as I'm the bus driver, I'm legally responsible for this bus, and I gotta keep an eye on it. And secondly, because of my leg. What's wrong with your leg? It's attached to a fella that doesn't want to go wandering around in the rain at night. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, alright then. Guess you don't have much choice. Can I borrow your umbrella at least? This is a left-handed umbrella. Nuts. Sorry about that. Here, I do have a flashlight you can use, though. Good luck. Yeah. Drink red cola. Protect your family. And I'll build more from before the war. The war? Oh, I man. Alright. This gas pump is empty. This gas pump is full of water instead of gas. There's a little bit of gas left in this pump, but there's no hose on it. <clears throat> Seems like just yesterday this gas only cost six and fifteen sixty-four meter gallon. Uh, those were the days. Now with extra lead. Mmm. This station seems to this station seems to run out of service. Either they're out of postcards or all the scenery around here is invisible. <laughs> there isn't one object left on the snack shelf. A cheese loaf. Ugh, nobody in their right mind would consider this vile substance a snack. The door to the cash register is pointed towards the front of the store. It's mostly empty. We find some loose change. There's a baseball bat. Okay. <clears throat> empty oil cans. A whole pyramid of them. Sign that says employees only. Are you an employee? No. Well, since the place is out of business, it probably won't hurt to anything for you to go back there, I guess. If a broken radio can still be considered nice, this is a pretty nice radio. A desk presumably optimized for doing gasoline-related business. Four of the drawers contain nothing but old receipts and pencil stubs. The fifth one is locked. Okay, so we're looking for a key at some point. This shelf smells like axe grease and old paint, probably because that's what's on it. The shelf is laden with miscellaneous electrical widgets and doodads. You don't have any use for any of them, though. The shelf is full of, of old personal, personal files. Each object that you examine on the shelf is dirtier and more boring than the one you looked at before. Okay. Oh, we're... Okay. Some kind of weird machine. Looks like this is control for that car left thing. Nope, nothing happens. It must not have power. You really want to know the story behind this sign. Staying clear of lift before operating. Steve. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a big tool chest, but all the good tools have already been stolen. Ah, damn it. I wanted to steal a tool. Fuse box. Hmm. As advertised, this is a box containing one fuse. However, the fuse is broken, which is probably not intended. You should keep an eye out for a replacement. Must be one around here somewhere. HDR rendering. High dynamic range rendering. Arachnophobia. You won't encounter any spiders. You will encounter so many spiders. <laughs> Skip confirmations. Removes food, potion, cat... And cat boon effect repl replacement confirmations. The total playtime will be displayed. Woo! This option is haunted. <laughs> Raise that dialogue options that would result in combat. Interesting. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I Woo! 
Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <clears throat> Spark plugs. Use them. All sales final. Oh, well, let's uh, keep going. <laughs> Finnegan's optional gym. Box optional boxing gym. You don't have to fight if you don't want to. Good, no, it's not compulsory. <laughs> yeah, the the, 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 the the previous game to this, West of Loathing, is a really fun game. So if you think this is interesting, you should almost certainly play that one, too, because... Yeah, it's it's the same kind of style as this, but the same kind of like themes and currency still meet and a miserable looking hitchhiker standing in the rain, listlessly sticking out her thumb. Hi there. Her head turns very slowly to face you and her eyes don't quite meet yours. Can you give me a lift? I need to get to Albany. Sorry, I'm going the other way. Oh. Also I don't have a car. Oh. What's your name? I'm Mar. Lydia. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Although I admit the circumstances aren't great. <clears throat> so what's in Albany? Your family there? No, I just want to go somewhere new. Albany isn't new though. It's one of the oldest cities in the country. Haha. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Do you know where I can get some gas? Gas? The bus I was out on ran out, and the driver sent me to find some more. Bus? Yeah, I'm trying to get to Ocean City. I've never been there. Well, all right then. How about this rain, huh? Lydia looks very slightly surprised and glances around slowly. Oh, it's raining. Yeah, it sure is. What a night to be stuck on the road, huh? I hadn't noticed. I get the feeling you don't you're not much of a noticer. Well anyway. See any good movies lately? I saw Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde at the Nickelodeon. Oh, that's a classic. What did you think? It was very scary. I liked it. I prefer comedies myself. Have you seen the new Buster Keaton one, The Cameraman? I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, he's great. You have to see Sherlock Jr., that's my favorite. Really terrific. Um, reading any good books lately? I read The Invisible Man. It was really good. Oh yeah, H.G. Wells is great. Have you read his new one? The War in the Air? I don't care for it. The one I'm thinking of is Mr. Something on Something Island. I forgot the name, but it was terrible. <laughs> his early works are his best, like The Time Machine. Yeah, I love that one. I'm glad we were able to find something we can connect on, Lydia. So, um... 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 Um, <laughs> how long gonna let me keep doing this? <laughs> like the most awkward, just like uh, 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 um, uh, okay, goodbye, good luck. This field is extremely corny. <laughs> God damn it! <clears throat> hey, uh, I ain't wanting to be unfriendly, but this is a private residence they all just barged into. Oh, geez, sorry. Everyone's so everything's so desolate outside. I guess I was just assuming this place was abandoned. Well, come morning, you'll be right, so might as well get in out of the rain for a spell. Thanks. My name is Martini. Howdy, Mar. I'm Elias. Elias Chekhov. Make yourself a home. We got bears. All these boxes are labeled bears. <laughs> Why are they labeled bears? <laughs> are these boxes really full of bears? Nah, these boxes are all canned pears. I had a little fun writing the labels is all. You want a can? I got one left that didn't fit. You got an item. Bibson's Extra Sweet Pears. Gee, thanks. We got gears. What's up these boxes of gears? My, my daughter Simone left these behind when she went off to school. Figured I should keep them for her. That makes sense. Tears? Or that, is that tears? What are these boxes of tears or tears? Don't be ridiculous. You can't put neither of them in the boxes. That don't make any kind of sense. Well, then why are they labeled that? You know, whatever. Shares? What in here? Stocks? Scissors! Oh, shears! <laughs> Jesus. This is a very large box, considering that most people own either zero or one class ring. Is this box really full of class rings? Yep, about 140 of them. Did you go to college 140 times? <laughs> nah, of course not. I just collect them is all. Why? Well, they're rare, but not very rare. They're all different in interesting ways, and they're shiny. That there's the collecting trifecta. Huh. Well, alright then. Let's see. A collection of stains make its home, home on the range. <laughs> a kitchen's ink brand kitchen sink. <clears throat> There's a rifle hanging over the fireplace. Are you leaving this rifle behind? Yep. How come? Well, it's a varmint rifle. When I go out, where I'm going, there aren't any varmints. There's vermin, to be sure, and critters and such like that. But that Mike doesn't list any of his examples of a varmint quote varmint, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> No need to fret over right now in any case. The gun is for later. Later? Yep, much later. Huh, okay. There's a weird device on top of this box. 
What's this funny looking thing? That's a duck call. What's it for? It's for calling ducks. Oh, fun. Used to be. Don't work no more. I'm kind of being haunted. Haunted? <laughs> yep. Well, not haunted exactly. Bunch of spiders got in there. Now it sounds all scary when you blow it. I see. If you want it, it's yours. You gingerly take the duck call, trying very hard not to think about spiders. <laughs> what spiders? Good job. <laughs> Okay, that's how we access our items. So, so this is what we look like. Let's see. Baseball hat's equipped. Our luggage. We can't... It'd, it'd be impolite to go through your stuff in someone else's living room. Fine. Uh, increases mysticality by one until you eat something else. Okay. Arlington the Canary. When you were four years old, Arlington flew in your bedroom window and refused to leave. He's been with you as a familiar ever since. Each round of combat increases your muscle, mysticality, or moxie by one. Okay, cool. Cheese loaf gives you some moxie. I don't think we've picked a class yet, so it's hard to really say what's going to happen when we do combat. You don't, you'd have to be impenetrably dense to wander into these woods. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, that's... Okay, that's how we got back in... There's nothing in the clothesline except a pair of socks and an old gun. You take the gun and leave the socks. They don't look safe. You spend all that time cleaning your gun and the rain comes along and ruins it. Typical. Uh, let's see. Is the bat the same? Okay. Currently, a classic dirt water slugger. With this, you can either take someone out of the ball game or just take them out. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll use the pistol because I do plan on going a moxie build, which I'm gonna guess would be. Well, it, it involves like gut range stuff because well, <laughs> this scarecrow is a bit more intimidating than usual. The crows here must be really aggressive. <laughs> the scarecrow's got a fucking gun. Show it, you aren't scared. Weapon attack. Hit a scarecrow with a rusty pistol for one physical damage. This end your turn. Decreases the target's muscle, muscality, and moxie by one. Usable once per fight. Pick up a rock and throw it at a scarecrow. Doing two physical damage. So I can either reduce its stats, which it will shoot me, it tends to shoot me for five damage. So we're gonna reduce its, um,. We're gonna eat, honk at it. And now it should only do four damage, but we're still probably gonna. Yeah, we're still. We might not be ready to fight this yet. They didn't eat any of the food that we found or anything like that, so. Hmm. Well, we're gonna shoot it anyway. Ow. Oh, that's actually nice. The little bird gave us another moxie, so that will do. Less damage, just throw the stone here. Okay. We're gonna shoot it again and win now that we've used some uh, shenanigans. <laughs> now it's just a regular scarecrow with a gun. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Oh, let's see. It's an old tractor. There's an old rag shoved in where the gas cap should be. Pull the rag out. You pull the rag out and slip the tank. Smells like there's a little gas left in there. You dip the rag into the gas tank, soak in all the gas, and wring it out in your can. We got a third. That, that tractor is the right most interesting thing in this part of the county. <laughs> all right. These shops, these socks just keep getting wetter. All right, what do we have here? These barn doors are locked. Okay, well. Elias is looking around and mumbling to himself as he checks it off his mental to-do list. Oh, tell me about it. So you're moving out? Yep, I finished packing, so now I'm just waiting for the movers to come and take this last load of stuff. You got movers coming in the middle of the night? Now in the morning, but I went and packed my teddy bear and forgot which box he's in. Can't sleep. I <laughs> see. 
Why are you leaving? <clears throat> well, my daughter went off to college, so there's nothing keeping me here. I never particularly cared for farming, anyhow. Just kind of fell into it, you know? So I reckon I'd take the opportunity to retire and travel a bit. See what kind of trouble I can get up to. Hey, nice. So what's your story? What are you doing in a night like this? I got a letter from my Uncle Murray. It sounded urgent, so I hopped a bus to Ocean City. I ain't sure how to tell you this, but you got a ways to go yet. Yeah, the buses were not gas, so the driver sent me to scavenge for some. I got you. Oh, I think there's an old gas can in the barn out back. You're welcome to it. Thanks. I can warn you, though. You have to fight my daughter for it. What? Well, technically, I should say my daughter's monster. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's a thing my daughter Simone built. What? <laughs> See, my kid's a real technical whiz. She built an, uh, an auto-ominous robo-traption to help with plowing and harvesting and the like. Worked real nice, too. Wow. Problem is, after she left, it blew a what's it tube and got violent. I'm pretty good with machinery. When it comes to these newfangled electrics, I might as well be a dog trying to read Play-Doh. So I locked it in the barn. Ah, I see. You're welcome to try your hand against it if you got a mind to, but please be careful. It's got a lot of sharp bits to it. Here's the key. Alright, cool. Oh, fuck. I, I... I... I know what... I understand... I've made the connection of what he's... Early saying, saying this gun's for later. He's Chekhov. That's Chekhov's gun. That's like a literary kind of thing. <laughs> I just got that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? This is just a paint. <laughs> this is just a painting of a bunch of tools. <laughs> this cabin is rusted shut. You can, I could force it open if I had three muscle. Ugh. You have a recurring nightmare about searching for something in one of these. There's a nice barrel, but it'd be nicer if it had anything in it. Ba well, there's the monster. Based on the arrangement of objects around it, you conclude this is a machine for turning hay bales into loose hay. A bale, a baleful pile of hay. You're not gonna get past that thing without destroying it. All right. So what we can do is. Uh, throw this rock and then shoot it and win Simone's monster is not just a pile of parts on the floor, rest in parts hey found some more gas you went through a lot of ga a lot to gain access to this can we've got a two-third can full of gas it's a workbench for welding now I do have a thing that would let us um Basic skills. Okay, we need 15 XP to gain another uh, Moxie, which is what we're probably going to be going for. <clears throat> Basic humanity. You're a you're a minimal a minimum viable person. You occupy space and are capable of moving through it and perceiving things. <laughs> Good to know. All right, I know we had a uh, like a food. I think it was the cheese loaf. Yeah, we're gonna eat the cheese loaf. Cursed, <laughs> cursed by an absence of crackers, eat the cheese loaf with your bare hands. In the end, you are unclean both inside and out. <laughs> Improved loafing. The high fat content of that cheese adjacent snack you ate has made you better at relaxing. <laughs> Alright, so now we technically have two moxie, we can search this. It's mostly tools you didn't don't understand, but you do find some gloves. Welding gloves? Is that, oh, I think that's armor. Oh, yep, those are, that's definitely armor. A pair of thick gloves designed to protect your hands from errant, errant sparks caused by your negligence and lack of walking skills. Well, yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> okay, there's nothing else over here. We already murdered the things. Chromatising days are over. <laughs> Hey, Elias, hmm, what can I do for you? Tell him about the scarecrow. Uh, I, uh, had to beat up your scarecrow, sorry. Well, I was leaving it behind anyhow, but why'd you have to go and do a thing like that for? It shot me with a gun. Oh, alright, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable then. <laughs> Let's see. This door is locked with some kind of elaborate electric lock. What's with this door? Oh, that's Simone's room. Hopefully she ain't left anything important in there, because I plum forgot how to work that a crazy lock she invented. This door leads to the bathroom. Ask if you can use it. Can I use your bathroom? Sure. How'd you know the door's the bathroom, though? I always have a knack for knowing which doors lead to bathrooms, is all. Well, good for you, I guess. Alright, let's see. 
This is a surprisingly modern toilet for such an old house. You flush Chekhov's toilet, hoping it won't come back to haunt you later. <laughs> you got enough of CP now to learn a skill. Open the character sheet via the icon on the top right, or hit C. You can see your face in Ellis's mirror, just like your own mirror back home. Look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, Mar. Hey there, good looking. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Why? Wow. Oh no, no, no. You remember something really embarrassing you did a couple of years ago. Ugh. Blah, blah. <clears throat> you can use that to change your expression. <laughs> like if I like I will I'll show it real quick. Like if we if we smile and then we leave. <laughs> He's smiling. They're smiling now. I probably would just normal though. A vicious clawfoot tub. <laughs> All right, so we can level up now. You know you're not supposed to wear plaid and stripes at the same time, but you're so cool that you can get away with it anyway. Your moxie helps you look cool, move with grace and style, and deal damage with ranged weapons, guns, and musical <laughs> instruments. Okay, yeah, that's definitely what we're doing. Let's see, what's mysticality here? Let's see, figure out things out, sound smart when you talk, and deal magic with, with magical weapons, mostly utensils. Well, yep, we're gonna go with, um, Moxie. <clears throat> and now we have three Moxie. This door looks like it hasn't been used in a while. What does that lead, I ask you? Spare bedroom, ain't been used in forever. I don't even bother opening the door since that dust devil got in there. Feel free to help yourself, though I doubt you find much use. A dust devil? Yep, those critters are a real nuisance around here. They're attracted to beds that ain't been cleaned under properly, and since I lost my broom back in 20 and 26, it's been a real, what's that Simone call it? A nutrient-rich environment. <laughs> Ornery little beast, real territorial. It's a shelf full of pulp westerns, the cattlemen of glory, a trail of blood creek, reckoning at cowboy trail, riders of the night. Hey, this one looks like it's worth a read. The handgun's tail. Yeah, but cases like this sometimes just have like random books on them that actually are worth your time looking at. <clears throat> Unlike most westerns, this one is written from the perspective of a gun. <laughs> Unlocks advanced trick shooting techniques. The story is pretty boring, but but it contains some very some but it contains some very technically complex descriptions of advanced shooting techniques. Okay, so I don't need mysticality to do anything with that book. That's unfortunate. Okay, bunch of duck calls, good. We got the rusty pistol, which is our moxie weapon. A dusty old nightstand. You find an old wallet in the drawer. Taste of old ranger with dried fronds. <clears throat> that dust devil is really kicking up some dickens under there. Are you sure? Hmm. Maybe we should explore some other stuff before we go to that. Because, yeah. This turtle is stuck on its back. Why aren't you helping it? I am. I'm helping it. There you go, buddy. <clears throat> Enjoy blue cola. The honorable choice. An old billboard from before the war. <laughs> Looks like they drove this boxcar out here and then took the track away. Boy, someone must have hated this boxcar. <laughs> we have a full gas can now. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, I think that's the whole point of us doing stuff here is get gas. <clears throat> and... Uh an open fire in a closed space. Classic. Hey, there's something in there. Reach in and grab it. One hot arm. We have. This is not the indicated use of the gloves, you know. We got a crowbar, though. A cheerful looking hobo tootles idly on a harmonica. Hi there, I'm Mar. Well, howdy there. Neighbor, I'm Howie. Pleased to meet you. I'm not actually from around here, though. Oh, the way I see it, this whole country is my home, so everyone is my neighbor. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Either that or they're all trespassers to better get off my property. <laughs> I'm just Josh and your friend. Care for some jerky? What kind? Clam. It's a local delicacy. Huh. Sure, I'll have some jerky. There you go. Can't have bad stuff myself. Like eating a dried slug, but saltier. Come to think of it, that's exactly what it is. You're really selling me on this local delicacy. If you ask me, the locals are a bit weird. Where are you from? 
Originally, I'm from Hawaii, but I got bored of gorgeous tropical beaches and decided to hit the rails. You rolled the rails? From Hawaii? <laughs> yep. Real challenging trip for a first time hobo, but I made it through alright. You ever think of going back? They only got that one track there, so it's a one way trip. I might head back for a visit once they build a second one, though. Huh. Do you live here? Not permanent like, but I've been camped out here a few days, all alone. Well, it used to be a bit livelier, but the bosses sent a railroad bull to run everyone off. Railroad bull? You mean like a cop? Yeah, you can say that. I think he's still prowling around back if you care to test your metal. I don't advise it though. Is he packing heat? No, he's unarmed. One of your arms might make a pretty good club once he gets it off you. Hmm. Any plans for the future? Well, we're in the walls. There's a camp forming in Ocean City. I figure I'll mosey on over there once this rain lets up. Word on the wall? I never heard of that phrase. Is it through, through the grapevine? Heh. <laughs> similar, similar. I see. Is this your, is this knapsack, knapsack your only luggage? Oh, that ain't mine. That's been here since before I arrived myself. Nobody's been able to figure out how to open the dang thing. If you figure out the trick, you're welcome to it. You, you inspect the bag. It appears to be latched shut with one of those puzzles made out of bent nails and steel wire. Howie it wasn't just harmonic and Dixie. Ha, huh, this isn't a puzzle you can't solve, so maybe a puzzle harder than this one. A little silver key. If I'm not mistaken, this key goes to, um... The only reason I know where that key was is because I I watched someone play this part of the game. Because I was like, oh, this game's out? And then I kind of watched them play. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be playing this myself. Alright, so I think there was a, uh... It was in the, the, the service station where the, um... Oh, what, what is this? At this exact spot, on the 13th of October, 1908, the state's first mass-produced automobile, a Ford Model T, purchased by Hiram Oak Prolins, accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, Lydia Barnsley. So apparently, that woman you talked to a few minutes ago had been dead for exactly 20 years. Good. Swell. Everything about this is great, and you aren't regretting this trip before you even arrived. Go on about your normal, non-haunted day. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Um... I think it's this one here. The fifth drawer can say the hose with the nozzle on it. That's way less boring than you expected. The little key, silver key falls into a hole in the floor and disappears. Oh, bye. Oh, that lets us uh, get some more gas, even though I thought we have a, I thought we had a full can. <laughs> an 133% full gas can. Hello, Lagerda. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you're doing good today. Alright, well. We did that. We did stuff at the farmhouse. Let's see if there's anything else to the left we can do in this area. <clears throat> You've heard a lot of nice things about Topeka, but not... 1,200 miles worth of nice things. Yeah, no, no shit, right? All right. Well, here's Dust Devil. We could try fighting him. doing my best to be. Well, sometimes that's all you can do is just do your best to just be good. Oh, am I dead? Yep, I'm dead. Hmm. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Should have listened to Chekhov. <clears throat> hmm. There's a loose floorboard here. Oh, I've fallen. I can't get up. Well, I'm sure I probably could. All these jars of food are revolting, but on the bright side, all but three of them are broken. Take the unbroken ones. Are you sure? They're really gross. Jar of gross old vegetables.
Can't tell if these spider spiders are fighting or flirting. <laughs> Interrupt them either way. <clears throat> so what does this do? Decreases um ah uh, that decrease decreases um muscle mysticality and moxie by three. Okay, uh so let's throw a stone. And we should be able to just shoot it to death. <clears throat> oh, Jesus Christ. Arlington, stop caring. He sings a sad song. You apparently have somewhere south the two spiders worth of fighting you. <laughs> just woke up. Well, good morning. <laughs> Let's climb up a shitty ladder and let's see if we can try using one of these jars of vegetables on this uh, dude. Like now we can kill it. Thank God. Okay. You really gave the devil its due. Arlington, the canary grows stronger. One maximum HP. Good, good for you, Arlington. The dust under the bed is no longer bedeviled. <laughs> All right. What's up, Cheka or Elias? <clears throat> hey, Elias. Hmm, what can I do for you? Tell. I took care of that dust devil in your bedroom. Did you now? Well, thank you kindly. Of course, it's a bit late for my purposes, but I imagine next occupants will be grateful. Hopefully, the thing didn't rough you up too bad. Nah, it was a snap. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. And we could try this. <sighs> the spiders again. A more dangerous blind spider. Ah! So this one is the one I need to kill first because it can do five poison damage. Five poison damage. Okay. Sneaky fucking devs. I see what you're up to. You have rendered Chekhov's cellar spiderless, or at least free of spiders are large enough for you to see. Shudder. <laughs> Is there anything else here? Hmm. I suppose not. <clears throat> Okay, I guess the spiders weren't worth talking about. Okay, anything else we can do in here? We flushed the toilet already. Uh, character sheet. We have 10 XP and we can't spend anything on anything yet. If we had 5 more XP, we could spend something on something. Let's see, let's go back here. This says I'll uh, force it open for two muscle. Oh, uh, let's uh, see. Clam jerky gives you muscle. I would get that would get us two muscle to open this. 
You know, in the jerky till gnawing is done. Slightly clammier. Your body is now approximately 1% clam on account of the small amount of clam you just put into it. Alright, what do we got back here? Somebody has placed a sheet of filthy linoleum on the ground here to an effort to lend legitimacy to this outdoor kitchen. The stew in this pot is beyond help, but you could probably salvage the ladle. Hey, this isn't a ladle, it's a spatula. No wonder the stew's so messed up. Someone left a perfectly good mason jar full of gasoline in here. We now have a 106% full gas can. You were hoping for an outdoor dining room, but there's just woods in that direction. <clears throat> there's a carving on the truck on this street. It says, Howie loves playing the harmonica. Aw. Oh, Jesus. That is a not a happy looking cow. Uh oh, it's the, that, that railroad bull. Howie told you about told you about, although Railroad Minotaur would probably be more accurate. Take it by the horns. HALT TRESPASSER! And we're gonna heave this to reduce its, uh... Should reduce its, uh, damage by three. Never mind, it reduced, it reduced it by one. That will still probably make this fight much more doable. Adam. You beat the Minotaur. Excellent. A, a 1911 Ford milk crate for wheels. That model never really took off. Oh, look, it has gas can in it. You add the gas to your can because you can. We have a 200% full gas can. It's a crude device with a key. Oh, Alright, well. I think what we can do now is we have enough XP where we can probably boost up to, um... Anything for you, Elias? Okay. Not wrong place. What about here, I think? In the barn. I think there was a... There was a rusted cabinet that, if we had three muscle, we could, uh, get into. We're gonna get. We're gonna buy another muscle with our XP. This would have been nice to have, but you can recognize the letter E from really far away. But we'll get this. <clears throat> now let us open this. It's full of a little glass bottle labeled Harlan Tussets Medical Gasoline for horses weak of limb and character. <laughs> Rude. But you'll cook all the bottles and pour them into your your gas can. Sorry, future sick horses. Alright, well, that, I don't know how much gasoline you can get here, but that seems like a little extra. I think that dude, that dude's going to be able to get to Ocean City like twice. Alright, I don't think there's anything else we can really do, because we can't get into here, I don't think. The farmer's daughter's bedroom's door's locked. <laughs> yeah, because I think back in here we could, um... You don't have to fight if you don't want to. I think back in the garage here, if we had a uh, three mystical, we could figure this out. But I don't think there's a way for us to get the stuff for it. Oh wait, can I get a fuse? Oh, we got a fuse. All right, well. Well, I guess we got more. 
I guess I guess it's probably possible to get the whole to get 300 percent, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to get two more uh, two more total um, mysticality. So I don't know if it's truly possible. Hmm, this turtle seems to be heading Ocean City too. At this rate, it might beat you there. Oh, it's got to be named Turt. Interesting. All right, cool. Well, I think that's about all we can really get out of this area. <clears throat> hey there, friend. Any luck in the gas? You show the gas your gas can. Well, his gas can. Oh, huh. That can doesn't usually hold that much gas. No sure how you did that. Well, whatever. All right. Climb back in the bus and return to your seat. And soon you're dozing off to the sound of rain spattering on the window beside you. Unfortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. The sort of sleep you slip into so gradually you don't even know you're asleep till something wakes you up. Plunk it straight. I realize that your meandering thoughts of the past few minutes have been utterly strange, shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kid, this is your stop, right? They're not totally forgotten. Oh, uh, what? All ashore what's going ashore. Thanks for traveling Willis Bus Co. All right. Cola Wars surplus. The army surplus store is closed for the night. Going seems inaccurate. <laughs> Probably nothing you want in here anyway. That's what we're having. He smiles and looks up and lets the rain splash into his face for a while. Heh, seems to be just fine, I guess. A wise man once said, the rain falls on poor men and rich men alike. Was that before umbrellas were invented, or... My name's Gus, by the way. Hi, I'm Mar. Pleased to meet you, Mar. Say, you wouldn't have a couple of meat to spare, would you? There you go. Here's some meat. Thank you very much, Mar. Old Gus won't forget your kindness, you bet. Take care easy, Gus. Yeah, have, have, a, have a nice life, Gus. <laughs> It's a bus stop. It's a trash can full of trash. You find a discarded bottle of cologne. Increases your sin charm by one until you use another potion. Hmm. This note no says, please. I think this store sells broken glass and drafts. <laughs> hmm, this building looks perfectly solid. Maybe it's just the people are running it that were condemned. This trash, this trash's reach has exceeded its cans grasp. Given the current conditions, dark and stormy, you probably shouldn't wander into any alleys. The door to the newspaper office is locked and the windows are boarded up. Looks like print really is dead. You thought it would at least seven or eight more decades left. Secure, secure, rebrous. Building and loan. It's late. The bank is closed. Can't see anything interesting within walking distance in that direction. All right. Well, I guess we have only one place we could probably go into, and it's probably Murray's uh, Antiques, which is why we're here. The bell over the door jingles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up at you. Oh, hi. You must be Mar. We don't get any many customers at this time of night, or at all, really. That's me. You were expecting me? Yeah, Murray didn't say much about you, but he gave me that letter to mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, jeez, you're soaking wet. Come on in, and I'll get you a towel. You walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any vintage brick, brick a brick, brack, as Jessica grabs a threadbare bath towel from a shelf and pulls, pulls a tag off before tossing it to you. Thanks. Is Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He isn't. You said it in a kind of an ominous way. Where is he? <sighs> I wish I knew. He had a line on, an on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should just get some backup, but he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he didn't come back. Is there something I'm missing here? This is an antique shop, right? You make, you make trying to talk great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, this is going to take some explaining. <laughs> well, I definitely intrigued now. We don't have a lot of time right now, but follow me and I'll give you a quick sketch. 
Just gonna lead you to a back room furnished with some desks and some strange looking machinery. Welcome to our back office, the hub of our little operation. I guess by operation you're talking about something other than antiques? Well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out that there's a bunch of antiques circling that are, well, hinky, would be a real interest to me. Hinky? Murray called them tainted, dark magic, real bad mojo, you know. Cursed? Oh, for a second, I thought you were making bathtub gin or something. It's no joke. That's what a real job is here. The antique store is just, well, not really exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques, too, and selling them keeps us in scratch. But we're trying to hunt down all the evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back? That's, that's the long and short of it. Yep. What do you say? Are you in? I'm always up for a crazy adventure. Well, yeah, I can't just leave him in the lurch like this. Great. You hear the door, sh the shop door open, and after a moment, a goblin pokes her head in the office. Hello? Oh, hey, that's well timing. Hey, Gabby, Murray's, sis Murray's sister's kid showed up. Come meet him. I go by them, actually. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Hi, uh, hi, hello, the pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you be a deer and carry their their luggage to... Oh, that's actually really nice. Gabby, would you be a deer and carry their luggage to Murray's room and grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? They can sleep there till we find Murray. You got it. Gabby pick up, picks up your suitcase and carries it through a door in the back of the room. Great, I can really use some sleep. This desk is a mess. Whose desk is this? Murray's. I keep nagging at him to straighten it up before someone bumps into it and we have to call the National Guard to dig out them out of an avalanche. With cursed proof shovels and a squad of extras handy. Anyway, best to wait mess not to mess with it. <laughs> Messages none. There's nobody you need to call right now. There's nobody at this desk. Whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He's he's up fixing a leak on the roof right now, but he'll be back later tonight. You don't have time to play games right now. You can't even hazard a guess as to what this contraption does. Modern radio stands here in defiance of the concept of antiques. A white cat is snoozing in an old towel. What's the cat's name? What's the cat's name? Calliope. Murray got, a, got her a couple years ago. You gave Calliope a good scratching, but she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Eh, she'll warm up eventually. Try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? No, we're all out. You can get them some, tom some more tomorrow. They have them at the Cola Wars Surplus Store next door. Okay. You wonder what this door leads to. You open the door and there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently it goes nowhere. Well. Well, I'm going to turn it in. Good night. Hang on, so you can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right here while I'm sitting. <laughs> well, hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need to do before the night's over. I'll be happy to help. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is so sketchy, we've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectotron 1000. <laughs> We've just gotten it up and running since Murray left. It turns out there's a tape that thing practically right on our doorstep. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was going to have Gabby go get it. That's why she came over tonight. But since he turned up out of the blue, I'm, I guess there's no time like the present. <clears throat> I am probably not exaggerating when I say there is literally no time except for the present. What? As in, there might not be a future. You won't have to go far to go. It's just down the other end of the block, if the reasons are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. It should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in the fight. Fight? Heck yeah! Yeah, well, hopefully I won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby. Gabby appears with an expectant grin. Go to the newspaper office tomorrow and help them get that hat, Okay. Okay, Gabby is ready for for an action. Let's mosey. <sighs> All right, fine. You say it's a hat, a cursed hat. According to the readout, yeah, a man, a men's fedora probably. And I'm supposed to do what? Just break in and take it? Well, not break in exactly. I managed to finagle a spare key out of the guy at the realtor's office. I'm pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. You'll be on, in, you'll be in and out and back here and in bed before you know it. Sweet. Let's do this. Gabby grins and gives you a thumbs up. Gab with Gabby. How you holding up, Gabby? Gabby has readiness for an action. Have you lived in Nurse City long, Gabby? Oh, yes. All of Gabby's life is here. Gabby's great, great, 
great grand Gabby came and popped just some blocks from over here, or to popping, as they would say, haha. <laughs> oh, so your family's been here for quite a while, huh? Yes, 14 years. You know, Gabby, it's been a few years since I spent time in Ocean City, but I don't remember it being this run down. That is a true thing to say. It used to be much more clean and shiny. What happened? The economy's terrific everywhere else in the county. Country. No ideas. Economics is not is not the house Gabby keeps my wheels in. <laughs> How'd you get mixed up with Murray and the whole antique store deal, Gabby? Oh, it, oh, it coincided. Gabby was look, well, Gabby was looking just at old clothes and, her, and heard over Murray and Jessica talking about a mysterious thing to get. It had an adventure smell. <laughs> then Murray said, we're going to need some muscle for this. And Gabby says, Gabby has several muscles, strong ones. And that was what it was. Gabby has been helping you ever since. So you're a flapper, right? Haha, <laughs> yes. Gabby flaps all the time. Gabby's parent flapped too. And Grand Gabby. But it's only been to South for seven or eight yet. Oh, right. Goblins, uh, well, you don't live long, very long, huh? Depends on how you look for it. <laughs> parent Gabby is popped a year and a half ago, but this Gabby basically is that Gabby, and previous ones too. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry too. Don't worry too hard for for to get it. Us goblins think human baby making is super crazy. You're a real firecracker in a fist fight, huh, Gabby? Huh, Gabby likes fighting and dancing. The best two things. Gabby invented fight dancing once, but this world was unready for it. Maybe fifty years later. Okay, I think we're repeating things. Yeah, we're repeating things. So we'll we'll go ahead and we'll. Come, Gabby. Let us be off. Alright, what do we have here? There's a handwritten note on this desk. Robson, first Hyden, then Car... First Hinden, then Carver. Who's next? Venable says if Burgess comes for him, he's gonna karate chop his desk in half. Sincerely. Curtis, Curtis. What's a karate? <laughs> a reporter's cufflinks. An accessory. Do I have a... Oh, the water gloves. I probably want those instead of the mysticality, because... Well, I don't exactly do mysticality. Or I don't plan to, at least. Hinden, I'm not paying you to publish cockamamie conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. Grover Burgess, editor-in-chief. P.S. Do you like the word cockamamie that I used up there? It's a slang term I coined. It means ridiculous or implausible. I think it's really going to catch on. There's a half-finished letter in the typewriter. Reginald, I think Burgess is on to us. We've gotten careless. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be typing this out as a letter instead of just talking to him in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me under the water cooler this afternoon. Ah, crap. Here comes Burgess with peak slips. Sincerely. Blank. It didn't say who it's from. The, letter, the writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under, under the water cooler? What's that all about? Oh hey, it's one of those new arcane press newsfeed things. High tech, high tech. Parisian bards declare independence. Claim to botch, claim to botch tavern as a sovereign city state. Today's list of band dances: the Chutney Slider, the Dirty Dirty Blitz, and the Upside Down Tango. Second edition of Principa Mathematica published. We still can't understand a word of this, says local children. Jack Dempsey removes teeth to improve boxing skill. Mm-mm, says Dempsey in an interview. Today's winning racehorses. Bristler's mother. Too much corn and howitzer jacket. Babe Ruth gets haircut. Barber says, you'd think he could have left a better tip. Severe storm causes trolley disaster. Prevents five other trolley disasters. <laughs> Prohibition agents confiscate 40 barrels of wine. Ten cheese wheels and some nice and some nice fresh honeycomb also seized. Charles Lindbergh cooks stew. Onlookers report it smells like it might be beef or maybe lamb. 
Okay, I think these are yeah, these are I think these are repeating now. All right, cool. There's a half finished document in the typewriter. Government corruption at all time high. The government has once again slashed funding to city services and social programs, citing waste, but without offering any supporting figures or explaining where the funds have been reallocated to. Additionally, anonymous, report, anonymous sources report to, it cuts off abruptly. May as a result, the pink slip next to the typewriter. Curtis, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, not enough people buy the paper anymore to keep the lights on in this joint. Electricity is expensive because it's a very recent innovation. As such, fully half of your salary is paid by government subsidies. This is to say that the hand that, that feeds you is the hand you keep biting. We got we go way back, buddy, but you've given me no choice. Clean at your desk and scram. The note says, Tucker, I got you that bottle you wanted. I, st I stuck it under the water cooler where Burgess can't find it and read us out the profies back. Under the water cooler? And it's surely not still there, but it couldn't hurt to check. No, it says, Robson. First ten, then the carver. Who's next? What's a karate? Okay, yeah, I saw that one. Coffee. There's a little bit of very, very old coffee left in this per percolator. Pouring yourself this cup of coffee is the first step in a short, nasty journey. Speaking of coffee, I have to drink mine. Ah. There's a crumpled up pink slip on this desk. Carver, I can't believe I have to tell you, but this is against company policy for an employee to steal the printing press. You are fired. You are so fired. Oh, perfect timing. Good morning, bud. I gotta drink, drink more coffee. I can't believe I have to tell you this, but it is against company policy for an employee to steal the printing press. You are fired. You are so fired. I need a new phrase to describe it. I'm giving you the axe, and if I see your face in here again, I'll... I'll give both give you the axe and set you on fire. <laughs> Grover Burgess, editor in chief. P.S. How did you even lift it? You must have had like what five accomplices? Unbelievable. And make a mental note to never pick a fight with this Carver person. <laughs> See a thin three ring binder in this desk. You got an item: pneumatic tube system operation manual. It's newspaper archives from 1783-1799. Without anything specific to look up, this seems like a waste of time. I'll check all of them anyway, because maybe there's something hidden in one of them. Ah! Oh yeah, we we there was a there was a memorial on the side of the road about the first the very first Model T hitting hitting and killing the very first hitchhiker, and that gave us a date to look up. You find something interesting? Tragic accident certain to have no consequences. Tragedy occurred yesterday evening when Hiram O. Crollins, owner of the first mass-produced commercial automobile registered in the state, accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, i.e., a person standing on the side of the road, attempting to solicit transportation from passing motorists. Fortunately for Mr. Crollins, the notion that vengeful spirits of the dead might haunt the places of their demise and murderous phantasmagoric rage has been rejected by modern science as rather unlikely, wouldn't you say? Unlikely, sure. It's not like we saw an actual ghost on the side of the road and talk to them for like a few minutes. <laughs> it's the newspaper's archives from 1920 to the present. Okay, nothing there. The drawer in this one is slightly ajar. Nasty old lefters? Mmm. Search wreck. Looks like Venable made good on his threat. Nothing. Venable must have taken all of his stuff out before smashing it. It's a heavy big water cooler and it's got something to hide. Hey look, a trap door. Oh. Well, I guess they weren't kidding when he said under the water cooler. Oh, fish people. Uh-oh. It's a calendar from 11 years ago. There's a huge black skull scrawled on July 22, 1917. Huh? What happened then? It's underground press. Literally, there's still a newspaper left in it. An underground newspaper. Literally, there's still a newspaper left in it. <laughs> hey, Gabby. How you doing, Gabby? Gabby has, has readiness for an action. All right. Yeah, I'm sure you do. It's a control panel for the pneumatic tube system. The control panel has a green button, a red button, a, a big lever, a knob with a bunch of letters on it, a series of colored lights that are all currently off. Something about something around here seems pretty fishy, and it's these two moist fellows standing between you and that abandoned hat over there. 
Not wanting to get any closer to them, you choose to interpret investigate as squint at them from a short distance away. Which is probably for the best, as it might be bad for your mental state to see them in too much detail. These humanoid creatures are between five and six feet tall, hard to judge because of their hunched over posture, and covered with scales that glisten slickly in the dim light. Though you couldn't tell if it's a natural luster or due to being covered with oily sewer filth. More notably, of course, is the fact that they have huge fish heads. Sorry if I buried the lead here, but you know, saving the dramatic part for last and all. Their huge bulging eyes, round eyes, glare at you out of the darkness, faintly luminous like radium watch dials. And they hiss and gurgle at you between rows of pointed shark-like teeth. Gill slits in the side of their heads open and close like thin, wet mouths gasping for air. Or whispering terrible secrets, whichever seems more likely to you. Gross. Appears they are very displeased to see you, but are smart enough to hold off until attacking until they judge how much of a threat you are. Well, let's try to fight them. Spitting Fishman intends to spit on Arlington the Canary. For don't, don't hurt Arlington. Don't hurt Arlington, no! What does this lunch do? Decreases Spitting Fishman muscle. Well, that seems oddly specific. Um. Oh, I can kill one of them immediately. The rock. <laughs> Gabby will slap Burly Fishman for three damage. Gabby will heal always for five HP. Oh, that's good. Gabby's useful. Get him, Gabby. <laughs> slap. Leave Arlington alone! Perish! You won! So much for those things that you'd rather not think about any further. Alright, well, they're, they've they been defeated. It's a very old man no will cover. This must be the hat just go on to recover. Got an item. Terribly conversed fedora. A simple black felt fedora. It doesn't look cursed, but has a palpable aura of menace around it. Nothing good can come of this. What is it? An ominous, vaguely person-shaped stain on the ground. Yeah! Alright, now we had a, we got like a, uh, well, let's look at our character sheet. Do we have enough, how much XP we have? 20? Well, looks like we're going to be getting good eyesight next, because, Yeah. Yeah, that's what we'll, we'll save our XP for that. Okay. I, th I think we had a manual for the pneumatic tube system. This ref reference manual for a citywide network of pneumatic tubes. Looks like the eye has some state-of-the-art delivery infrastructure. All right. Well, in this case, let's uh, just consult the manual. Why is broth so fucking tasty? I could drink this all day. Well, maybe you should. <laughs> Good morning, Stinks. Hope you're doing well today. We are playing Shadows Over Loathing. We just fought some fish people, and now we're trying to figure out this pneumatic tube that I'm probably going to not do right. Push the green power on button. Push the pump and gauge. Adjust the su suction rate according to the pressure diagnostics. If a red indicator is light is on, push the suction adjust dot A. If blue, E, green, D. So, green engage, green pump engage. The green button makes success when I click and hear a motor start up somewhere. Pull the lever. You pull the lever. A very satisfied, pleasing kerchunk. And the motor noise turns into a sort of loud, whiny. A yellow light is glowing. Okay, it doesn't say anything about a yellow light. So let's... Hmm. <clears throat> Green button. Pull the lever. Turn the knob. 
Oh God! They, <laughs> they didn't tell me. They, let's see. A E D. Let's try B. Click the dial and place the noise turns into a sort of shuddering growl for a second before an orange light flashes and the entire machine shuts down. Okay, so it wasn't B. It's, it's not so C. Maybe C. Let's try that again because maybe there's something hidden here. It's like that's how something gets taken away. It looks the machine's no longer responsive. Well, I it looks like I probably broke it. Well, we got the, we got the hat that we're probably not supposed to put on. Oh, let's uh maybe not. I wasn't I was I wasn't expecting that to let me actually put that on. <laughs> Cause I know uh the previous game had a uh, a hat with teeth on it that when you put it on it enabled hard mode. So I wonder if that would uh be a similar thing. Oh hey, the dude's back. The handyman's back. Charles Wallace. You must be Charles Wallace. I'm Mar. That I am. Pleased to meet you, Mar. What do you do around here? Oh, you're general handyman stuff. Sort of stuff. I keep the lights on and the water running. Built the Detectotron and the Uncursing Machine, too. Wow, that's some really high-tech wizardry. Uh, it's nothing really. Let me ask you something. What is, what is this about an Uncursing Machine? Oh, I only built the thing. I can't begin to tell you how it works. <laughs> the innards are all wired up to a little porcelain cat figurine that Murray found somewhere. Well, that's weird. In a real traditional sense. Yep. Hmm. I think it... Nope. Nope. All right. All right, Jessica. How's it going? Did you find the hat? I found a hat. I guess it's the one you meant. It doesn't look unusual, although... Well, it does creep me out a bit. I can't really put my finger on it. I know what you mean. Feels kind of like you have a headache, except you don't, actually. More like a feeling of dread, like something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, that is definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take that hat and go sit in that machine over there. Uh, why? That's our uncursing machine. Gotta get the curse off that hat, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, what? Can't we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to get involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together, you'll lift the curse from the hat and transfer it into a sort of allegorical dream space that the machine can transfix. Uh, what? Sorry, I know it's a lot. Let me rephrase. <clears> hmm. <throat> The uncursing machine uses your subconscious mind to drive a wedge between an item and its curse. The item is clean, clean relatively easily, but that doesn't negate the curse fully. Once the break from the item, the machine stores the curse and allows you to physically project it into it to try and re resolve the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. That's where things get a little weird. I know it sounds crackers, but you'll have to give it a try to understand. So I, so I have to put the hat on. And then we need to get in the machine. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and put the weird metal dome over your head. What would what would you like to uncurse today? No sooner have you sat down to the machine with a hiss, positively whiffs the floor straight up into your into the dome. The hat rattles around in, in there angrily, like a snake in a cement mixer, <laughs> and after a good loud minute, flops limp and wet into your lap. Whatever ominous energy once possessed the terribly cursed hat is gone. It's now simply a terrible hat. <laughs> but the curse itself still lives, transfixes a dreamlike construct within the machine. Now, how do I get rid of that curse? Hmm, see, curses are like energy, Mar. They can't be created or destroyed, only changed. Can't remember who said that. Isaac Newton? Newton? Oh, New Isaac Newman. Newton? Newton Newman, yeah. <laughs> That machine knows how to take a curse from one object and put it into itself. That's for how you change a curse. So, I don't know. That's some higher consciousness, spiritualist stuff. Don't know much about that. I'm more of a Newton Newman sort of guy. The Fedora's curse bounces around the innards of this machine, daring you to come project your consciousness into it. Sounds safe. I'll do that. Oh. Oh, God. Fedoral Reserve. <laughs> I, I I heard thy death call, creature. Resty now, I will find in thy mortarer. A tree fell before its time, a ground stained with sin. Yes. Et in Arcadia ego, even in Arcadia there is death. Yes. Even in paradise there is a killer. Alright. <laughs> Thou art... Thou know who I am and why I am here. I cutter. There has been a murderer. 
who knoweth thou of murderer? That I did not do the murderer, and that is all. What mo have thee for me? Only this, I am one of three brothers. One of us always tells the truth, and one of us always tells lies. The third of us is not specking at all, but honks. If I find in thee a liar, there is no thing I can do to save thee. Aye, Cutter, thou art a servant of the wood. Blessed be her branches. Blessed be. Why do you have... Why do you have fedoras on? So I guess... <laughs> so I guess we have to figure out which of these trees is the murderer. And which one only honks. Big power in the wood today, Cutter. Aye, a tree has fallen in the forest and has made a sin. But not me a sinner, that I assure thee. Thou claim to be without sin? None of us is without sins. Mine did not run to mortar. Then whose? Look to my, for my brother. My brother's speckin' of three brothers. Only one who always lies, one who always tells the truth, and one who does not speak in all but honks. Which speckin' thee of this? This is fairy talk. No thing has honk in this land since Mother Duck laid the big egg. No honkin' since then? No, sire. Hmm. Well, let's talk this one. Something is rotten in the woodcutter. <laughs> I am order. <laughs> With pervasions at its source. Speak to me of pervasions. I have no thing to say, for I do not tarry with them. What do thou tellin' me? I am troubled by the mortar, but of it I know no thing. I warn thee, my forget my forgiftness makes no realm for liars. Thou will do what thou must, Cutter, I have no doubt. I like now Thy brother speckins of three brothers, one who always lies, one who always tells the truth, and one who does not speckin at all but honks. Which speckin thee of this? I do not honkin, sire, I swear in upon it. Never has thou honkin? Never, never, tis a sin in mine eyes. <laughs> Long may thee grow. Which tree has done the mortar? Why do they all have fedoras on? Is that... Well, one of them only has two fedoras. It makes me think it might be you. I'm not a mortar cutter. Look to my brother. My brother is picking up three trees. No honking. No sire. I say I did not do the mortar. I also say I'm one of three brothers. One of us always tells the truth. One of us always lies. And third of us is not speaking at all about honks. Thought you lied about honking. What say? My brother's honking not. Thou was lied to the cutter of the wood. That was do mortar in the wood. Do not run from me, tree! Thou do not run, nay, I grow in. In one hundred years I will half grow in so tall and strong thine axe will never fell on me. But I will not wait one hundred years. Die, mortarer. <laughs> oh, alright. <laughs> Big rot in the wood today, Cutter, and wait, what? No, that's not you. You don't talk like that. <laughs> Dark thoughts of trees, axes, and bloody sap cling to your skin. You shake them off like dreadful cobwebs. You're not sure what just happened, but as you turn over the, form the formerly terribly cursed fedora in your hands, you feel confident that the curse which plagued the starchy little felt thing is finally gone for good. Put the hat back on it. It's nearly sparkles now. Upgrade! Now all you've got to reckon with is whether you're the kind of person who goes around wearing a fedora. It'll do. Nice hat. How'd it go? I, uh, I, uh, it worked, I guess. Great, what was it like? I had some kind of crazy dream. There was a woodcutter. That was me, I guess. And these talking trees, and one of them had sinned. You know what? Never mind. Some, some kind of crazy dream is plenty for me. Your room. Simple riding nest with no chair or pins or paper or anything. Finally, time to get unpacked and get some sleep. Ah, what the heck? You stamp up the flames of his total loss. Everything you own has been reduced to ash. Everything? Everything except bizarrely the stamp from Murray's letter. Interesting. It's a shelf for knickknacks and, and chocolates. There's an old rag doll on the top shelf. Must have been left by the previous tenant. Lots of empty space in here. You should try to acquire a bunch of random crap to clutter it up with. A television set. You heard, you've heard of these. Unfortunately, no shadows have been invented yet. Well. You were very ready for this day to be over.
A dream about school. These dorm beds are so uncomfortable. It's a poster of my favorite literary ghost. Lots of people in this hallway, it seems. Hello, hello. How's it going? Do you know which locker is mine? I can't remember which locker is mine. I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, it's alright, I'll figure it out eventually. Nice faces you got there. Do you know which locker is mine? I'm sorry, I can't remember which one is mine. Huh. Six lockers. Check the first one. A thriving colony of ants. Second is full of peanut butter. The third contains a shrine of Babe Ruth. <laughs> the fourth locker is empty. The fifth locker is full of cookbooks, but all in French. The sixth locker opens with the vast, uncaring emptiness of space. <laughs> there isn't a seventh one. I said, check the seventh one. I said, there are only six so Check the seventh locker now. Okay, geez, look in the seventh locker. It's full of old school papers. They're all got your name on them. They're your papers. How I spent my sp summer by Martini, age six. This summer I visited my Uncle Murray. Uncle Murray is funny. He knows magic. I had a fun time with Uncle Murray. The end. Underneath the pile of papers you find, ugh, an overdue library book. Our founder, Branworth Gorvunculus III. This lady looks friendly. Hello, there you must be. Ah, here we are. Teeny, Martini. Say it, don't spray it. I know, I know who I am, but who are you? I'm your academic advisor. It's time for you to choose your class. But I dropped out. In real life, certainly, Yuma Howard must choose a class. Okay. Looks like there's three classes for you to choose from. There's advanced kicking and throwing. This is for pig skinners. Then we have overview of curd conjuring. This is a class for cheese wizards. And finally, weird time signatures 504. This course is for jazz agents. Jazz agent uses moxie. As there's a syncopation and improvisation, jazz agents use their, their rhythm and moxie to move through the world in a style. In combat, they attack with subtlety, weakening their foes and stacking the odds in their favor over time. That sounds like what I want. Alright, alrighty, you're a jazz agent. Name's Teeny, Martini. <laughs> now then, there's just a minor matter of your minor. Looks like you've already completed it, but don't say what you studied. <laughs> the psychology of rocks sounds like something I would fucking literally do because I like rocks. Ah, a psychogeologist. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So you know a lot about rocks and gems and their hopes and dreams. Absolutely. Well, with that, I believe we're done. Feel free to wake up and go about your day. Uh, how do we go about doing that? She and points at the door on the right side of the screen. I mean the right side of the dream. Just through that door. Thank you. Ah, the abyss. You can gaze into it for days. Nice lady at the desk says that this door doorway leads back to your waking life. It came to me in a dream. The psychology of rocks. <laughs> You wake feeling surprisingly refreshed. Yesterday's adventures leave you none the worse for wear. Your effects are set each day. Okay. Morning, Mar. How'd you sleep? Wait, why are you still wearing those wet clothes? All my other clothes burned up in a freak luggage fire. Ah, geez, that's weird and unfortunate. You seem less surprised by it than I would expect. We've kind of gotten accustomed to weird and unfortunate stuff happening around here. You can pick out some clothes from the shop out front if you don't mind looking like some dusty old grandparent. I'll be I'll be all right. Thanks anyway. Once you get the sleep out of your eyes, I got another mission for you. Mostly the readings put it at the local speakeasy at the back of an alley at the other end of the block. The artifact isn't there right now, but we're but that's where I'd start looking. Maybe you can pick up some clues. It appears to be a watch of some kind, a pocket watch or maybe a wristwatch. I can't be certain. A watch in the speakeasy in the alley. Got it. You need the password for the speakeasy. It's fiddlesticks. Here's some meat for expenses too. The army surplus next door should have anything you need in case things get rough. That's ominous, but thanks.
Everything good, Gabby? It sounds like a cat meowing. Okay, I think this is all just the same stuff. Yeah, it is. That's okay. Chapter 1. Welcome to Ocean City. There's a car. <laughs> Good booga. Dubious grenades. Dangling bags for army some... Well, I guess Gabby's just with us in general, which is fine. There's a lot of ordnance for a civilian shelf. You'd think there'd be a law against this kind of thing. Hi there, my name is Mar. Hello, fellow war enthusiast. I'm Herschel. Herschel Wood. Actually, I hate war. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm an enthusiast. I'm, I'm ambivalent about war. Oh, yeah, sure, war's okay. Heck yeah, war, war, war. Uh, actually, I actually hate war. Can I interest you in any fine historical memorabilia? See what's for sale. The reason they call it a haversack is because it helps you have things. Cola Wars helmet, okay. Let's see, Cola Wars ration cigarettes. Corroded cavalry saber. A dented bugle. Let's see, we currently have a uh, the pistol, which is Moxie plus which is Moxie plus one physical damage. But if we get this, it'd be uh, Moxie plus two. Let's see. Expired seltzer. This can of seltzer is on the verge of exploding. <laughs> this book taught Cold War soldiers that all the words can never hurt an enemy combat, and it extremely loud orchestra sounds definitely can. Government issue sardines. Especially date on this has been scraped off, probably because it's so far into the future that people will be too distracted by the idea of flying cars to actually eat sardines. <laughs> A trench spork. These were issued to Cola War soldiers who didn't deserve a decent spork or a decent or a, a decent spoon or a decent fork. I'll buy a can of sardines because the cat wants some. I'll buy a bent, dented bugle because it's an upgrade, and we'll sell the um. Let's sell the baseball bat, because, I mean, we're not going to really use that, and let's we'll sell the rest of the pistol, because that's worse than what we have. Alright. So we got the, we got the, a weapon upgrade, and we got the sardines, is there something else? <clears throat> this seems like it'd be a a skill for uh, my character. <clears throat> Although I kind of want the the haver's sack because that give us item drops. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. All right, dented bugle. Let's equip that. No, where's the haver sect that I just bought? <clears throat> there we go. That gives us more item drops. No pants, no shoes. We've got 15 HP. We currently have two muscle, two muscality, and two moxie. Character she. Oh, we got a bunch more stuff now. And that, how much, like, we have 25 XP, I'd still want good eyesight. <laughs> Bend the truth for fun and profit. It doesn't count as lying if you do it for a really good reason. <clears throat> rhythm in your blood. A lot of extra blood for the rhythm to dance around in. Air of mystery, virtuosity. <clears throat> okay. We're probably gonna still go for for good eyesight next, because more meat and more item drops lets us just do everything else better too. I would imagine. Right. Going going seems inaccurate. Probably nothing I want in here anyway. Okay, the that gentleman is gone. <clears throat> Let's 
Easy. Now let's use this coffee. You drink the coffee. The months have not been kind to it, and because it can't exact revenge on the months, it decides to exa exact it on your mouth instead. Alert, regretful. You have plenty of mental energy in with, with which to wish you hadn't drunk that disgusting coffee. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, let's see, we have sardines that we can give it to the kitty, I think. That's Mr. Kelly. We're not gonna eat that because Mr. Kelly doesn't really do us any good. Let's see if the cat wants the sardines now. You open the can of sardines, Calliope immediately wakes up, devours the entire can, and then purrs as she licks the remaining oil from her fingers. It looks like you made it a friend! New cat unlocked! You can now pet Calliope to receive a boon. You give her a nice scritching, she purrs as she goes back to sleep. Calliope's affections have reinforced you against the slings and arrows and mice and birds of the world. Alright, more armor for the can of sardines, perfect, alright. So you make friends with cats, they can give you buffs. Interesting. <laughs> okay, there's the alley. You weave, you, weave, you weave between various trash cans and piles of uncanned trash until you reach a serious looking door. A little uh, a little panel slides open near the top of the door and bared eyes regard you through it. Password? Fiddlesticks? Okay, coming in, but you better not be a profi. I'm not. Scout's honor. Which is an actual perk we have. It's probably one that appear otherwise. Oh! Don't bother him. He's just bounce. He's bouncing. This guy loves hitting those spoons together. <laughs> a, a milky eyed sot. He turns his head towards you and smiles. Okay, there's a literal a, a, a phone call from someone that's literally named Spam Risk. I'm not picking that up. Buy him a drink. After a few minutes, moments, and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. Then try, but the, they try, but they never dam up the flow. I all right. <clears throat> After a few moments, and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. If if you're not caught flat-footed, the truth can sometimes be found at your very feet. It's still to its essence. The lake is just a valley abandoned. I I have a feeling that might have just been a waste of meat, but that's okay. A spoon has been placed at a really challenging height. Maybe you can ask the bartender about it some other time. <laughs> They're keeping the spittoon away from the player this time. Because in uh, West of Loathing, and unlike most of the bars, you'd find spittoons that you could like root through and get horrifying descriptions of what was inside the spittoons other than the loot you can find. So they, they have it up and away. Because they know people will go after them. <laughs> in my mind, the bar is shaking up a storm. He looks up as he approaches and doesn't stop shaking. Hello, he grins. Hello, baby. Welcome to Oliver's place. My name is Mar. Where do we say, baby? Are you Oliver? Oliver? Oh, heck no. I'm Fancy Dan, the cocktail man. Pleased to meet you, Dan. Hey, do you happen to know what time it is? Perhaps you have been have a watch on you? Sorry, baby. The only one around here who carries a pocket watch is the owner, Oliver Gluck. And he left a, about an hour ago to pick up our latest shipment of hooch. From who? From whom, baby? Before I was Fancy Dan, the cocktail man, I was Fancy Dan, the English teacher. Sorry, from whom? From the mob guys we always get it from. Where's the handoff? The old refrigerator factory. I see. How do I get there? <laughs> he grabs a cop to napkin and hands it to you. Uh, thanks. Oh, ha, wrong napkin here. He takes that napkin back and get grabs a different one with a couple of icons scrolled on it. Take the napkin. Napkin? Ocean City napkin map. <laughs> As you take the napkin, Dan points out some of the icons. We're here behind Murray's store in Plunkett Street, so if you go out the alley and then head straight for the edge of the napkin, you can't miss the factory. You now have a map of the area. You can open it by clicking the map icon in the top right or hitting M. Thanks, Dan. Don't mention it, baby. You want a drink for the road? First one's on the house. Sure. What do you have around drink around here? Beer. I'll have a beer then. Excellent choice. Keep things simple. You drink the beer. You've had better beer, but you've definitely had worse beer. <laughs> the guy doesn't care about you about anything except the baseline. This lady seems to be dancing to a different song than the other people. 
This guy's been affected with Charleston fever. <laughs> the piano, the, the player piano trills a tune. This lady is making ethereal music. Leave me alone, Spoon Man. <laughs> yeah, you, you, your band hasn't been invented in like in like sixty, like seventy years. <laughs> this lady is making ethereal music with spirit, spirit-filled glasses. It's weirdly responsible for this illegal poison dispenser to have a first aid kit. You've got gauze pad and an activated charcoal briquette. These people are obviously on a first date and you shouldn't bother them. It's on the floor over here. Oh, excuse me, Spoon Man, you're just gonna... Some weird symbols are carved into one of the floor tiles. Yeah, that's not ominous. It won't budge, it was barred from, shut from the other side. Alright, well now we have a map menu we can go to. In the daylight, it's clear this bank has been closed for some time. The door to the bank is fastened with three locks. That's the maximum possible level of security. What about four What about four locks? In 1928, four lock systems are still dismissed as unachievable liberal fantasy. <laughs> not, too, not a bad idea, but if you're going to lift the welcome mat, you need to know what you're looking for. A key? And there it is. The, bank, the security of this bank is inconsistent. <laughs> Oh, Alright, I guess we just... The, the door's locks are modeled in the monstrous mugs of the great hound Cerberus. Three-headed guardian of the underworld banking sector. <laughs> Each of the three has a name. Phylax, Methophon, and Sneaky Pete. A key will deepen its maw. Um, that's strange. The key turns over and over in a lock, but nothing happens. Something sneaky about this Pete. Uh, okay, you have to have a certain skill level to actually get in here. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to Sneaky Pete, the Cerberus head. <laughs> Alright, map of Ocean City. We can just wander around. Two goblins wearing shorts with suspenders and carrying, you know, those things. Those marching man things. They're like an upright harp, except the, instead of strings, they have middle xylophone bars. Those things. Anyway, these goblins are carrying those and they interrupt you. Hi, hello. Uh, hi, what's up? You're treading on the territory of the Glockens in... Am I? I don't know what a Glocken is. VR Glockens. V both. VR the toughest of all street gangs in Ocean City. What you think about that? Sure, I guess you do look pretty tough. That's true. <laughs> v do it. Your your uh, xylophones are pretty cool too. What? Xylophones? These are Glocken spiels that V have. Oh, Glocklins. I get it now. I'm so outraged over over you. I think V show a mugging do. Oh, we may have uh, picked a fight we probably don't want to pick. <laughs> Maybe. Only do four damage of that, but we can do uh, three damage at the rock. Hmm. Well, this thing seems like it does the most damage, so let's uh. Oh, we got two AP. We can just kill this thing, can't we? I mean, all right. And then let's two. <laughs> all right, well that works. Let's do flap slap. Oh, 
Well, the the must the this the rock does muscle damage, I think. So the bird has been helping me do more muscle. Well, we 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 beat the Glockenspiel goblins. You got an item, Glockenbrot. This is a small loaf of dark bread made by Glockenspiel obsessed goblins. Let's hope their single mindedness doesn't make them really terrible at baking. Well, if we eat that, we get more HP. We got some, we got some meat and some XP. Um, let's close the map and see. Do we have enough XP to level up to? Uh... Let's see. But we do have enough. That'll get us more item drops and more meat. I think that's worth it in the long run. Calliope's boons probably saved our life there. Not gonna, not gonna lie. So we have, we have potion, we have booze. We don't have food yet. So let's see if we can eat something. Let's see what we want to eat rather. Well, I mean the Glockenbrot's definitely not bad. It's more HP. So let's go ahead and just eat that. Eat the bread. Turns out the ingredient that makes it dark isn't rye, but charcoal. Glockengazoon type. <laughs> This bread doesn't taste very good, but has a very efficient from a nutrient point of view. Erg. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, this the, turns out this game has the wander thing where you can just kind of wander around to get into random encounters or find places. As you're walking, Gabby starts some conversations. So you're new in Ocean City, your first time at it? That's right, yeah. What things have you got of it? Well, to be honest, it seems a little rundown. Yes, Gabby understands you. It was much nicer before, before an economy happened. Lots of people. Very excitement. Oh. Have you seen the boardwalk yet? It looks like a cat wearing pajamas. What? It has games there and a fortune teller. Well, that does sound like uh, a cat wearing pajamas. Yeah, we found a new place. Let's wander around a little bit more, though, see if we can get to, get to another encounter or something. Well, just man flexing now. Excuse me there, assistant. Might you have a match on your person? I'm afraid not. Well, well, that just won't do. What if you should have cause to set something alight in the future or have one of mine? Uh, uh... So the person gave me a match. They weren't asking for one. They're trying to make sure I had one. A, be a bedraggled hobo shuffles up to you with his hat in his hands. Excuse me, friend. I don't mean to trouble you. My name's Cletus Pennington. I was just, and I was just wondering if you might have any meat on you can spare. Just seven meat for a cup of joe to warm these old bones. Well, I, what's in the sack you're holding up? Old bones, like I said. Here you go. Thank you, kind of friend. You're a real saint. I got I got more I got more meat from the battle than I than that anyway, so it's all right. You hear the ringing of cathedral bells and turn to see their source. Unsurprisingly, it's a cathedral, unless you're just naturally surprised by cathedrals. <laughs> They're so big and pointy, it could be hiding around any corner. Oh, there's a, another place. Young man wearing a flower dusted dusted apron. Smuggers up to you with a loaf of French bread on his shoulder and an arrogant sneer on his face. Hey, pal, this is Doughboy territory. If you want to talk, walk down the street, you gotta pay the toll. What's the toll? Five meat. That's all. That's all. I guess you don't really need the dough after all. All right, now it's ten meat. Now, now we're gonna fight, cause. Uh... <laughs> what is that? Margarita the dough baby. Okay, we can we can kill the dough baby with. We'll throw the rock at this dude. Actually, we can throw the rock at the dough baby and kill it. Dough baby destroyed. <clears throat> I mean, oh, we can just throw a rock at him too. Leave the bird alone! <laughs> Destroyed. You won. Looks like the guy is toast. A freshly baked roll. Say what you will about the effect the Doughboys have on the safety and prosperity of Ocean City. We have to admit that they are pretty good at making bread. A clammy dough blob. Ugh. 
It has always puzzled you that bread is so unpleasant, given how unpleasant its ingredients are when you mix them together. Uh, I think I get I mis said mis said a chef's hat. That'd be good if I was doing magic. A doughboy loaf. That's a weapon. This would be the perfect for making a combination club slash sandwich. Let's wander some more. On your way to wherever, you run into a cool guy wearing some cool sunglasses strutting down the avenue. Hey, baby, what's happening? Uh, hi. I can see you dig the shades. You got good taste. I, what the what? I like my sunglasses. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. I don't think... I don't think anyone calls them shades for at least another 20 years, though. I pride myself on being on the cutting edge. Care to buy yourself a pair? Yes. He takes you meat and expertly selects the best pair of sunglasses for you in the lining of his coat. Looking good, baby. Nice doing business with you. And that's the last of the cash you need to square things up with Miss Brewster. So thanks for that, baby. Miss Brewster? She's the lady that runs the boarding house me and the other traveling salesmen stay at when we're in town. She's strict, but it's a nice place. Nice. So, we got a little bit more moxie gear. Oh, it's an, uh, it's an accessory, so... We might, not, we might end up not using that, because I like the, I like the item drops boost. Let's see. The, the Cola Wars Haversack. Yeah, that's what I have. I'm surprised the stylish sunglasses aren't a uh, hat item. Oh well. Uh, let's wander some more. Hands in the air, pal. You're in tin lizzy turf, and this is a stick up. You turn to see a, a woman in oil stained coveralls pointing at a gun like tool in your direction. What the? Is that a cocking gun? Stick up isn't such. This isn't usually such a literal phrase. Actually, it's a grease gun, so I guess it's more like a slick up. Haha, <laughs> gross. Everyone's a credit. Give me your wallet. Fuck that shit. Get, get that shit out of here. Oh, I can use this combat item and immediately end the battle, so... <laughs> Get dunked on. You got an item. Ten Lizzie's Grease Gun. Gives your Moxie plus two sleaze damage. Interesting. You won. Keep both your pride and your world intact and grease free. Oh, Arl Arlington grew stronger and got some meat. This wandering stuff's usually a good idea to do when you're trying to, like, level up. Which I feel is something we should probably be trying to do. <laughs> on your way to where you're going, you happen to notice a guy across the street. In particular, you notice that he's sitting on top of a mailbox. He notices you too and extends his hand towards you for a handshake. You call out across the traffic. Oh, hi, you realize that I'm about 30 feet away, right? Yeah, but I can't leave the mailbox. Sometimes I regret my curious nature, but I guess I'll ask anyway. Why can't you leave the mailbox? Come on over and I'll tell you. Uh, sure. There's a mailbox here with a guy sitting on top of it. Guy reaches down from his purchase shaker and hi, I'm Marvin. Hi, Marvin, I'm Mar. What are you doing up here? A stunt! A stunt? It doesn't seem particularly stunty, you're just sitting there. Yeah, but I'm sitting here for seven months, fifteen days, nine hours, and forty-one minutes. Why? Why? It's a stunt. Okay, but are you protesting something or trying to attract attention to some cause? Nope. Do you have money riding on this? Is it for a bet or a contest? Nope. I feel like you don't really get the concept of a stunt. I guess not. Say, would you mind helping me out with something? Sure, what's up? Side quest? Okay. I've mainly been eating snackle cakes while I've been up here, and I'm out. Could you grab some more for me? Snackle cakes? Uh, are you serious? I admit they're an acquired taste. And I guess nobody other than you wanted to acquire the taste of powdered milk mixed with sawdust with the nails still in it. Besides, because snackle mills went out of business years ago. Yeah, but the shelf life of those things is incredible. <laughs> it's what makes them so good for stunt rations. I got my supply from Hiram's Grocery in the street. Could you pick me up some more? Yeah, okay, I'll be right back. As you walk past one of the Ocean City's many disused public urinals, you'll notice that one has been filled up with ice cubes. 
as he gets as investigate further for some reason, he knows that one of them isn't nice to keep it all, but a frozen rock. He wiped the rock he wiped the rock off, examined it and put it in, and pound it into flakes. Frosty flakes. It's like snow, but in flake form. Can you even imagine? Alright, well, cool. Dora's not excited about the idea of you going through it. <laughs> A single shoe. There isn't a second. There isn't a second shoe. Well. Oh my God! It's stupid walking. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right. What's up, bored-looking hobo? Well, oh, hi there. Hey, hello, Mumble. Uh, hi, Amar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, splattle Mumble. Samuel? Mm hmm. Looking for here in my groceries. Is this it? Was. Have you been standing here the whole time? Mm hmm. What are you doing here? I'm mm -hmm, just waiting, Mumble. Waiting for some work, Mumble. You looking for work? I don't think you're going to find any work here. Considering that the store is pretty thoroughly closed, I don't think you're gonna find any work here. Mm -hmm. Another storm mumble. It's like a nice store I was gonna open here anytime soon. Here, maybe you can kick cab in a different store or something. He tips the sat to you. What's this for? A passing cab. Good luck, dude. Well, let's pry it open and. Oh god, it's dark. Oh, it's not as dark in here. A lip balm. Even mice would be disappointed with this shelf. It's not empty, unless. No, it's definitely empty. But wait! Listen, it's empty, I promise. Huh, fine. Oh, wait, what's this? Wait, what? <laughs> just kidding, there's nothing. The counter is dusty and long abandoned. The register is empty, unless you know something who accepts mouse dropping as currency. You find an old invoice for a shipment from the Snackle Mills factory, which is marked as never having arrived. Factor's address is listed. I think they're trash here. The only thing left in the share is the shelf is a pair of rusty tongs. Equally a symbolic of idyllic summer relaxation or flesh searing carnage. <laughs> Alright, so. Snackle Mills! You, short, you, sh you stop short as you turn the corner and duck behind a lamppost. Down the street, three doughboys are hanging out in a thick cloud of smoke. Hmm. Closer inspection, well, distant squinting. None of them, are, of them have cigarettes. What's all the smoke coming from? One of them is waving his arms mystically. Are they conjuring flour? That's a good trick, but it doesn't seem like a great idea to stand there breathing it. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, these these little bastards need to need to perish. So I will just throw rocks at them. Wait, what? Why is this um, tentacle here? Oh, we just have a random tentacle with us? Uh, uh, all right. Okay, this one does the flower storm, so maybe we should kill this one first. Yeah. Tentacle buddy, go! <laughs> Healing spores. Fucking car ran him over. <laughs> Jesus. Let's see. Um... They're gonna they're gonna bash Tentacle Buddy. Kenvin's just here. Hmm. 
and I kill any of these guys. Hmm. No, I can't kill any of them, so I might as well attack the one that's I want dead. I don't know if this tentacle is gonna get another attack or not. I don't know. Let's uh just make it. Let's make a decision. Oh nope. Tentacle, tentacles down. Hey, that's a hit that that we didn't take, so that's fine by me. attack bash gabby with bread so we're definitely killing this one at least so let's throw the rock at you and then we'll attack this guy with our little Do the heal, it's probably smarter. Alright, Gabby is defeated, unfortunately. We can't actually defeat the Flower Stormer. Let's use one of these. Make sure we don't die, because, yeah. I probably could have done this battle a little better, but, yeah, whatever. The bird's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. One, you know you. <laughs> you know what they say: too many cooks got their ass get their asses kicked. More stuff. Deals two physical damage to all enemies. Oh, that's a magical weapon, huh? Normally, the entire purpose of a rolling pin is to stop flour from being in all kinds of different places, but this one has some ideas of its own. Wee! Snackle Mills. Grab a case for Marvin. Marvin, you really take the cakes. Empty vegetable oil drums. This crate is full of baking soda. The sharp is there to keep vinegar from getting into it. The loading dock is slightly ajar. It looks like the abandoned factory has been occupied by one of Ocean City's various gangs of street hoodlums, namely the Doughboys. They're hanging out in here with their leather jackets and white aprons, bragging about their sourdough starters and using words like focaccia and son of a brioche. Or they were until they made that huge racket getting in here. Now they're staring knives at you, and also pointing knives at you, and they're bread knives, which are serrated, so you really, really don't really want to get stabbed with one. Huge amount of loose sugar. They really bet everything on these terrible snackle cakes. The Doughboys are clearly less aggressive than other street gangs, and that they're glaring at you and muttering angry to each other instead of already having attacked you. Let's see, 13 HP, 8 and 8. Let's 
slimy dough, slimy dough. Bash Gabby with bread. Slimy dough at Gabby. How much HP does Gabby have? 15? Hmm. John, John, Jonathan the Tosser. We can kill him off with the, some one the, with this glob of stuff and then throwing a rock. Five sleaze damage, five sleaze damage. <clears throat> Alright, well, enjoy and, and return to sender. Gruffles be the dough baby's owner has been defeated, so has nothing to do. All right, we're gonna we're gonna murder this little thing. And then we'll just toot at this guy. Loaf bash! Nothing to do, <laughs> just ran away. <laughs> Dude! Flap slap. <laughs> you, you won. They, sh they should, they should call you too much soup because you just spoiled those cooks. <laughs> oh, we got, oh, we got two do d those balls to throw. It's a chef's hat. Another dough boy. Like, wait, what? More of them? Uh, let's look at our skills. We have twenty XP. No, we could get like something for this, but eh. <laughs> you muffin forker. Fight these ones too. Oh, flower storm. Yeah, we got we gotta go out. We gotta go after the flower stormer. Fifth. Oh, jeez. Well, I don't mind using these. Okay, we're gonna use uh, only one combat item per turn. We can throw two rocks though. Yeah, that flower stormer is a problem. Well, they're not anymore, but. Oh, there's another one! Some bitch. Let's see, can I do a combination of a... Uh... I should probably just kill these little, these little uh, slurped toast, toastadora, the dough baby. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, we'll kill the dough babies, just cause these things have enough HP to survive more than one round, so we want to make sure they don't do any healing, so we're just gonna...
get them. And you're just gonna be on healing duty. Okay, you have less HP, so we're gonna... We can't quite kill you this turn, so there's not really any point of doing that. Bash, heal again. We can kill this one this turn. Slow but steady wins wins the flower the flower race, I guess. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna do four damage to everyone. So let's heal again. This thing. Uh, let's see. We can't we can't kill him this turn, so we're not gonna worry about using the dough. Won't really make a difference. If we do this, we can kill them next turn without using the dough, so we can just save it for another encounter. The, bir the bird's not really gonna do anything. Hasn't really done anything useful for th this match anyway. Oh, Ar Arlington got stronger. You left, the, you left those dope boys in the dust. I think it's flower. <laughs> this stuff is laden with bags of expired flower. Mana and rich flower. Ever since the advent of ma mass produced magical flower, the co cost of fire insurance has skyrocketed. M miscellaneous chemicals. Solutions. Precipitates. Tinctures. You bet. We got a little bit of everything here. It's an arcane oven. Do some tests. Do some cooking. What do you want to make? You have one. You have the following craft ingredients: frosty flakes. Let's do fancy foods. Uh, cold armor. Oh, well, I guess let's do fancy foods. Might as well. You're all out of cooking ingredients. Increase your cold armor by five. All right. Okay then. The leader of the Doughboys, identified by the fact that he has a greasier hat than more rivets on his jacket than the other Doughboys. Found by the fact that he's in the manor's office, doesn't notice you when you enter. Here's to be focused on several large piles of wet bread dough lying on the ground around him. If you're interested in the history of Ocean City's baking industry, this shelf receipts would be a treasure trove. You are not. The boss of Doughboy has not taken notice of you yet, but he's probably not so dense that he can get any closer before him before he does. What the? Who the halva are you? Hi, I'm Martini, and you? He, he scowls angrily, trying to decide between yelling at you to get out or bragging about himself. I'm, I'm Ross Doughman Shibata, the best baker in the city. Nice to. Now get out. What are you doing with all these piles of dough? Not that's any business of yours. But I'm perfect, perfecting my recipe for bread golems. Soon I'll be going to be running this town. Oh yeah, you and what army? Me and me and my army of bread golems. Were you not listening? I probably shouldn't let you get away with this. You'll be you'll be lucky to get away with your arms and legs. Rise, my minions, rise! Uh oh, bread golems. <laughs> that's a that's ridiculous. They're not very strong. Let's see. We probably need to kill these bread golems first. Which we can do by chucking some sleaze. Throwing a rock. So we can throw we can throw another rock. And then two and kill this one too, so that's pretty good actually. Kinda wish I would have kept more of the bread bread uh, pieces or whatever, but 
And this guy is... <laughs> gonna attack the bird. Gabby can kill this thing. Flap or slap. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's give him some leftovers. You forgot your lunch. It also boosts the damage that we will do, because when you lower their stats in comparison to yours, you do more damage, they do less. So now we can do five per two. Now we can have Gabby just heal, and this guy's just not going to be able to kill any of us. So I think we basically, we're pretty much won the battle now. One. Looks like those golems are only half baked. 7 XP. You got Chibata's pants. You also got mana and rich flower. Ever since. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hello. Up. Oh. Haha. <laughs> this is fun. Getting into fights. You like a good fight, Gabby? Yes. There's not usually so many fights around here. What an excitement it is. Unless you do a lot of slapping. Do you know how to make a fist? A what? Here, look, you curl your fingers in like this and you put your thumb over the, over them here. That's a fist. You squeeze that all tight and hit people with these knuckles here. It's more powerful than a slap. Wow, keen as a peach. Sweet. Is there anything else over here? The boss's desk. Some meat and a dough baby recipe. You found the recipe for these little blob guys that the dough boys have as familiars. Man, loose sugar. We could have gotten in through either way. It looks like. Oh yeah, we need muscle. So we had we had Moxie where we could slip through in there. All right, well, let's check our XP now. We have 32, and to get more Moxie. Which is probably what we'd want to do is we could get this to get more HP too. We have 108 meat. French Rector is, I guess, technically where we're supposed to go. Let's go back to Marvin and give him these snackle cakes. You encounter a man carrying a medium sized piece of luggage. Not brief enough to be called briefcase, but unsuitable as a suitcase for more than two suits. Hey there, friend. You look like someone who appreciates a fine pair of pants. Do I? What does that even look like? Astute, discerning, even though I say perspicacious. I've never seen that. I've never seen that word, and I've never met anyone who dared to say that word before. Sleaze armor. Gabba, welcome, Nakura. Welcome. We are playing Shadows Over Loathing. Which is a fun, which is a funny, goofy, kind of like text, partially text-based like adventure RPG game. He pulls, he opens his case and pulls out a pair of slacks that are oddly stiff and shiny. Feast your eyes on these babies. What's up with them? They're waxed, guaranteed ge grease proof, and they're yours for only twenty meat. Okay, it's a deal. Great, this is what one pair of pants you aren't gonna regret. Sweet, we got some pants. Thanks. All right, Marvin, we got you your snackle cakes. And you'll get into the snackle cakes. I'm really jonesing for whatever it is that they use for frosting. Yeah, I found, finally found some. Here you go. 
Thanks a million. Here, take some meat for the cakes, and also I'll give you some sitting tips. Thanks. You're so good at sitting down that they make it look even easier than it normally is. Ooh, one moxie. Perfect. That makes us a little more powerful with our weapons. Auburn is still in the mailbox, but thanks to you, he's no longer hungry. Sweet. Okay. We have 42 skill points. I need eight more to get the next uh, level up here that I want. Uh, let's go back to Plunkett Street. Find your path unexpectedly blocked by a huge pile of junk. A broken down car, a busted lamppost, a couch with the springs poking out of it, and a wide variety of other assorted trash. Jeez, what happened here? Oh, Gabby has a memory of it. There was an accident a couple weeks ago. That car had a tire break and smashed into the lamppost. That explains the car and lamppost, but why are they still here? What's with all this other junk? C city trash takeaways are all contractors now. Who want and who wanted to pay for it? Nobody. So the car waits there. People put junk here because there's a place where junk is. Huh. Well, I guess I guess we go around it. No, no, not in the street. That's dangerous. Look at what look at that lamppost for what a car can do. Oh, well, sure, but the traffic isn't bad right now. And hey, here it is not any problem. Gabby starts picking up junk and stacking it out of the way, clearing a path through the middle of the pile. Thanks, Gabby, but that's not really... Heave ha! <laughs> the mighty shove, Gabby knocks the wretched car over on its side and wrestles it into a parking lot. Wow. Ha, <laughs> Gabby sure showed that car where a car goes. Woo! <laughs> Gabby's muscle increases by one. Yeah, if this, if this antiques thing doesn't work out, you could get a job threatening to park people's cars for them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright, let's go into the, the Cold War surplus place. Say hi. Let's go out the dubious grenades. Let's start buying these grenades. Oh, they're probably fine. Why doesn't the box say fine grenades then? He looks at the grenades, then you. Say, how'd you like to do some field research? Sure, why not? He hands you a bunch of grenades. Just try them out next time we get into a fight, and when you're all done, come back and let me know how it all went. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. Lip bomb, sleeves armor to use on a potion, a match, porter's cufflinks from Stacody. Doot! <laughs> That's what we got. We, we, we have a, um, let's see it. Our weapon is a dented bugle because we are a, uh, we're a jazz person. <clears throat> we also have some extra chef's hats because we fought a bunch of doughboys. So we can sell those. Jazz gang, jazz gang. <laughs> I'm go I'm doing the moxie build, or at least a primarily moxie build. We have a single shoe that we hop around on. A uh, tin Lizzie's grease gun. I don't know if that's gonna be useful. Box slacks that we paid 20 meat for. The graphics are fun. They're they're a little they're they're simple. Cheap cologne, eh. Yeah, we're gonna sell that too, just for more meat. Okay, now let's see, what can we buy that might be worth our time? That's armor, let's see. I might, I think I might want this. I think it gives us a, uh, combat skill. Let's get that. We'll buy some more sardines, too. Because if we find any more cats, we can uh, make friends with them. Alright, let's see. This book taught Cola War soldiers that although words can never hurt in any combatant, extremely loud orchestra noises definitely can. You study the ways in which the army used con controversial music to demoralize and injure enemy soldiers. It's kind of funny when counted as a what counted as controversial music when this manual was written. <laughs> There's an appendix full of charts and frequencies in which bones they shatter if you play them loud enough. You can memorize it if you took the time. 
Okay, so let's let you use XP to upgrade Orchestra Strike as well. Cool. Alright, well... Well, our next destination is gonna be, um... Well, we could go to any of these places, but I think we're supposed to be going to the Fridge Factory. Uh-oh. This, this toll booth was obviously stolen and dragged here. <clears throat> oh, I, ha I have an item called, like, One Shoe, so I, ha I walk with one shoe. <laughs> the, the 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 game that came before this West of Loathing has a has a book you can find in the first area called Stupid Walking, where this is one of the walking animations from that. But there's also just a lot of other ones that just don't make any sense. That's not like that's not how you walk. <laughs> All right, Gabby, what's up? It's how you doing, Gabby? Hold it. How you holding up, Gabby? It's the Beans Ease, Mar. You know, Gabby, I've been a few years since I spent time in Ocean City, but I don't remember being this run down. Uh, send Gabby to the speakeasy. Hey, Gabby, mind, mind waiting for me to... Oh, wait, I probably... <clears throat> probably don't... I probably want... It's... Hmm. In an Ocean City back alley, you find some strange graffiti. An, uns an unsolved long division problem. Oh, alright, cool. <laughs> Meow. Yeah, I probably don't want to be without Gabby, because she, she is a helpful person. Helpful goblin to have in a combat situation. Hey, Gabby, having a good time? Oh, yeah, so many rugs I have cut up. Want to come with me for a bit? Okay, I'll meet you up at the- I'll meet you at the door. Okay, we have Gabby back. I didn't realize you could just send her away. I'm sure there's some reason that you want to do it, but I just don't know that reason. You encounter a hobo who is sauntering down the sidewalk with a bindle over his shoulder, whistling a jaunty tune. Oh, hey there, friend. Aren't you Mar? I'm Zane Martinez. Uh, hi. How'd you know my name? Oh, we hobos are a tight-knit little community. When someone been helping us out, word gets around. Well, that's nice. A little creepy, but nice and balanced. Why don't you Why don't you come visit our camp? We'd be glad to have you. Where is it? Oh, you just head down 12th Street till you see the lot where the old hardware store used to be. And you take a, you know what? That'd be simple. We'll just mark it on your map for you. Come by any old time. Ocean City Hobo Camp. Bid him adieu. We can go visit her in a little bit. Let's figure out what these... Jokers have in store. Let's see. Miss Picture, we're equipping stuff that we would like to have equipped. I'm gonna assume these slacks might be better for sleaze purposes. With these durable wax infused trousers, grease will slide off you like grease off a of duck's legs. <laughs> these folks look like they're tr here for some serious business. Whoa there, Pally. This is a private party. Club members only. Yeah, like you said, club members only. What kind of club is it? It's the fraternal order of people who bribed us more than we we're earning as gate guards. Fop bum egg, I've never heard of them. How do I join? What are you, thick? I'd have thought it was obvious, pal. You give us meat. How much? 500, yeah, 500 meat. Clancy, I told you to knock off that repeating business. Am I supposed to, how am I supposed to come up with that kind of meat? Hi, huh, you can try panhandling with the other bums over and Gold Thwaite Park. Where is that? Just north and west of here. You can't miss it. Yeah, you can't miss it. For the, for, the, for the love of Mike, Clancy, dry up. Yeah, I have a feeling we're probably not meant to be able to beat that fight right now. So we're going to probably just try to go make some money or meat or whatever. Let's see what we got going on. Oh. There's a little sign, not picture, that says, Please don't throw meat in the fountain. It gets real gross. <laughs> hey, buddy, can you spare a little meat? Holy cow, buddy. Thank you. That just, just kind of surpassing kinds. What, what it is. Mom always said I got a heart made out of meat. Well, I can't let this generously go unpaid. One custom ob obi motive come up. Obo, oh boy.
<laughs> Check out this gigantic pendulum. <laughs> you don't trust the pendulum enough to get any closer to it. Edison coil and a Tesla coil. Explore the wonderful world of alchemy. You don't have any ingredients. Okay. There's a lot of rocks in here, and you know the names of every single one of them. Oh, we are a psychogeologist, so we know the mo we know what mo rocks are thinking and how to utilize them. <laughs> you extract various useful oozes and powders from the rocks. <laughs> nice. Nothing. That sounds dangerous. Complimentary dihydrogen monoxide. That's. This exhibit would be more educational if any of the gizmos were labeled. What do you want to make? You have the following crafting materials. Um, let's see. <clears throat> well, that sounds useful. I live. Yay for living, Ventus. Chilled mouthwash or luminous toothpaste. Let's hold off for now. It says no fishing. Since there's no water in the fountain, you assume that means no fishing for compliments. Good advice. This maintenance hatch is locked. The door to this building is locked. You find it. The world's least remarkable rock. Reassure it. You teach the rock to love itself for what it is. It's mostly just trees and hobos out that direction. Wander the woods. Wow. Oh, well, let's let's not say we did. Let's. You fell asleep. Well, I'm well, I'm I'm happy you got a little bit more rest. Hopefully that helps you get better soon. Or well, more soon, I guess rather. The park groundskeeper is inspecting a clipboard with the panic paralysis of somebody who has so much work to do that he can't do any of it. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's a grime splattered statue. Oh yeah, my character's name is Martini. <laughs> it's a crap it's a crap splattered statue. It's a filth splattered statue. It's a muck drenched statue. It's a muck bedecked statue. Nothing but the hustle and bustle of city life in that direction. Okay, that lets you leave if you want, but we're um Hi there, is something wrong? Uh huh? Oh uh sorry pal, I don't want to seem rude, but I'm much too busy to chat. I'm stuck running this place by myself, and there's a million things to do. Well, I could use a little extra pocket meat. How, could, how about I help you out? That would be great, except for new city regulations disallowing hiring random part-timers. Since this is a municipal park, only official government contractors are allowed to work here. There's a law against side quests? Why? Just to be a thorn on my side, as far as I can tell. It's not like any of these tasks are dangerous or anything. You got kind of a cagey look in your face when you said that. Okay, well, two of them are dangerous. But that isn't even half, and I submitted a request for help weeks ago and still haven't heard back. Well, you're in luck. I just happen to be an official government contractor. That would be terrific, but I'm going to need some proof. Uh, lie through your teeth. What, you don't believe me? I'm hurt. I'll have you know I was recruited by Mr. Johnson himself. Who? Johnson from Parks and Rec? Jeez, man, don't you know your own department? He'd be outright dismayed to hear. Oh, that Johnson. No, no, that's fine. No problems here. <laughs> Great. What do you need me to do? Well, that depends. What kind of contractor are you? An exterminator. A statue polisher? Oh, thank God. I wasn't... I wasn't... Sh I sure wasn't looking forward to doing that job. I think the bird must be eating leftovers from the old Snapco Cakes factory. It's horrible. Here's a rag. Can't promise there'll be anything you need in, the, in here, but feel free to borrow whatever strikes your fancy. Uh, let's see. Needs a stench armor, which I think we have. Oh wait, we might have something for stench. Let me, uh, let's... <laughs> the single shoe... Let's see, do we? Maybe we don't. Maybe there's something in here that we can use, though. A plate of homemade cookies. Okay. Maintenance kill rolls. 
They're durable and comfortable, but they wouldn't be appropriate for a fancy gala. Luckily, you're unlikely to be invited to any fancy galas. <laughs> Got junk mail and a battery. Okay. <laughs> they wouldn't be interested even if you just were pretending to work here. Alright, so stench armor, I know that you can buy, um, there's a, um, there's a gas mask you can buy at the store. That, that counts as stench armor. Fast talking salesman purchases you and starts his pitch before he can cross the street to avoid him. Say there, would you like to purchase a set of encyclopedias? No, god no, hell no, absolutely not. You stand your ground. He waits a few seconds and takes a step towards you. He opens his trench coat to reveal a set of dog-eared paperback books. This is an encyclopedia of blue humor, a multi-volume collection of the lewd and levacious, a trove of truly tasteless little treasure. I don't even have the money. I see, you want the book, you just don't want all those people seeing you buy it. Oh, what people? I don't get it. I'll find you later. Somewhere more private. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> yeah, I need to go in here and sell some stuff so I can, uh... Like, we can present these barbecue tongs because I'm not going to be doing mysticality. Um... I'm tempted to sell these because I'm not going to be doing mysticality either, but... <laughs> but that's equipment, so I might be... Oh, we have these. Why didn't I not sell these? All right, we can buy the, uh, the 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 gas mask now, which should kind of stench armor for the purposes of the uh, thing. See an IRS a <laughs> agent through the window of diner, struggle with his paperwork, pinch his cheek and keep walking. All right, <laughs> all right. So let's equip that. <laughs> should let us polish this. There we go, now you can get a look at it. It's a statue of Corinthia Bessenbossel. Putting Ocean City on the map by suggesting maybe we should build a dock or something so boats can park here. Hand chiseled from photo reference and enchanted to drive away, drive away mice. Statue of Daniel Ocean. Found Ocean City in 1770 and on his deathbed in 1804 requested that visitors to the Monument only view the statue from the left, as he felt that was his better side. A Cola War soldier. Here to all those brave boys in blue who took the ultimate challenge. Dedicated to 1919 by the Ocean City VCW. May the forces of the red continue to dominate and refresh forevermore. Dedicated in 1919 by the National Cola Association. Well, that mostly paid for the statue thing a landscaper our carnivorous plant ex 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 exhibition in the botanical gardens has gone out of control huh when you say out of control as in this is less of a drop for printing shares more of a baseball bat with nails in it oh wait this this probably this garden here you're in the botanical garden to find over by dangerous looking weeds oh that Feed me, Seymour. Okay, let's see. Off hands, we have the haunted duck call. That'll give us more moxie for fighting, which is probably better overall until we get better moxie. There we go, now his sunglasses. We don't have any rings. Pants wise, 3 HP versus sleeves armor. Uh, well, let's get let's get that for now. We have that single shoe. <laughs> as far as familiars go, we have Arlington the Canary, which can give us a a, a boost, which we, probably, we probably need to level Turt up to have them be useful, because they would heal. 
Drawback is a silly walking guy. Alright, well, we're gonna probably have to fight some plants. T, drink plants while looking at plants. <laughs> Northern beer barrel cactus. No, beer removed due to prohibition. <laughs> It's a system for it's a control system for botanical gardens, extremely complicated watering system. Nervous looking teen teen man's the, the tea counter. Hardy wheat tea. Let's see what potion do we currently have? Uh, one AP, yeah, I, I prefer that. So we're not buying any tea. Northern Northern Palm Tree, do not punch. Don't tell me what to do. Ow. Did we get something out of that? A broken coconut. <laughs> A hat, which one one armor, but I think that's better because it has HP. Plain sword leaf. There's a really sharp stock of it that you could probably take if if you careful. We got a sword, leaf, sword. Oh, that's probably better than our bugle. Our little uh, hurt bugle or whatever. Uh, so I meant weapons. Let's see. A dented bugle is, deals your moxie plus physical damage plus two physical damage. This is moxie plus two physical damage plus one bleeding, which is slightly better. Nice, all right. Well, wow, these plants do not look like they belong here. Hmm, can I do the orchestra strike every turn for one AP? I can, so that's better than the rock, it looks like. <clears throat> okay, and it died because of the bleeding. Nice. But do we leave Arlington alone? Gabby can punch this thing for seven. Good job, Arlington. You, you did good. You have successfully weeded the botanical garden. Joshua Tree. Name for its discoverer. David E. Tree. <laughs> Wetlands Nasty Bramble. Donated by a patron with no regard for the safety of the staff. <clears throat> eye grass. Caution. Avoid prolonged eye contact. Highland Bone Bush. We are beginning to believe that this specimen was donated as a joke. <laughs> <clears throat> Character sheet. How much XP do we have? 68? Okay, so we can get this to get more HP and more Moxie. Sweet. Okay, we got some meat for that. Let's see, what's the next one? An exterminator. Transform. I will become like the plants in the botanical garden. A little crazy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, great. We're having real trouble at our lepid lepidopteratorium. Your butterfly zoo. Nope, I very, I very deliberately did not get a close look at the monsters. Alright, well, we're gonna go kill some more monsters now. Oh, they're like big roaches. Maybe? Transformer, like, Derek, put it back! And <laughs> they're like, now go back. <laughs> Oh, that's a cricket. I thought that was like a, co a cockroach.
kill these guys real easy now. Harkinson grows stronger! Three of them, rude. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, guess we'll just have to kill one of these outright. Uh, Martini's getting attacked. Gabby and oh, you're annoying. Yeah, we're gonna kill you first, cause you're just gonna make it where you just get no stuff. Awesome. I'll be here for a little bit longer. Enjoy your food. Whoop. Immune to bleeding. Well, sucks to suck, I guess. I should it hot though <laughs> this bird is a lot le a lot less is it is it still a bird bath if it's for butterflies <laughs> this must be where the butterflies sleep and dream with it there is Zong Zhao well that's another side quest thingy done I got rid of the gross monsters in the do you know they're actually? I don't know. I don't want to know what they were. Thanks. I like to sleep at night. <laughs> okay, a plumber. Well, there's a. I'm a plumber. Well, that's plum convenient. Our fountain stopped running because it requires a real specific water pressure. And the pressure we get, and the pressure we get it from the municipal water supply has gotten unreliable lately. So I need someone to go down and adjust it. I'll lock the manhole for you. All right. Well, where is this manhole? A sign about those pointy rocks. Presented to Goldthwaite Park by Margaret, Ocean City Comptroller. A few of my favorite pointy rocks. Huh, it looks like the part of the sign has been graffitied. Well, they sure are pointy rocks. <laughs> I got they're coming with me, shoes. Hello there, Bush. Well, let's see how good these shoes are. Makes life a beach. What does that mean? Oh, it leaves like little sand trails. Uh, I like the I like the other things better. I like the single shoe. I like that better. It's it's silly. The manhole over here is probably in the next area past this. Oh, yep, yeah, it's right here. The, the, the note says, stop messing with these switches. The fountain does not work unless the pressure is exactly 40 gallons per minute. That one adds 50. One gallon per minute. 15. 45. So it needs to be 40. 18. 48. 25. Oh, oh there we go. Happen to kind of get it. It's apparently Fountain Kilarkta now. Sweet. Alright. A security guard. That's awfully humble for a police officer. What? I mean, since the municipal police force was entirely replaced with contractors, you might as well call yourself a cop, right? The rest of them do, but anyway, they're neither here nor there. There's a hobo that's been hanging out by the park front, and I'd like you to move him along. Is he causing trouble? No, not as such. Everyone likes him. Busking in the in the park is against city ordinance. Rules are rules. Uh, all right. Fuck. I don't want to be a cop. Yeah, I need to leave the park. You what? Yeah, sorry, but the characters has got to go. There's a city ordinance against busking here. Hmm. Funny how 
That only starts getting forced after I stop giving that bozo a cut. Of course, you and I both know when the police can actually run me off out of here, and you ain't no flat foot. This is true. Could you leave as a favor for me? Well, okay, you seem like a decent type, but I guess I'll you one. I'll find somewhere else to toot this old tube. Well, I'm glad I was able to just convince him to go without and actually hurt him, because he didn't do he's not doing nothing wrong. I get the hope to leave. Did you beat him up? What? No. Are you sure you're a cop? <laughs> just kidding. Thanks for all the help. Goldthwaite Park's looking ship shape. Thanks to you. Here, take this for your trouble. It's been in a lost and found for years. For whoever lost it was gonna find it, they had found it by now. Ooh, or a weapon applies bleeding, so that's gonna make us do even more bleeding. <clears throat> even better. Uh, there it is. Oh, it's already equipped. Sweet. Uh, let's go visit the hobo camp. I will just man flags you down. <laughs> Yes, but I might need it later. Ah, well, thank, thank you all the same. Toodaloo. I probably should have given him the match. Grub should I. It's that oboe guy from the park. Hey there, friend. How's life treating you? I'm doing alright. Say, I never got your name. I'm Obi. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Obi. I'm Mar. How's the camp? Well, it's fine. Most of the fellas here all got all kinds of stories about the troubles. And it occurs to me I maybe ain't done enough of that. Feeling a wanderlust? Alright. I want to put out quite a story. Let's see a wander thirst. Ah, uh, so he can have him as a, as a companion, nice. This guy's in a state of washboard-induced ecstasy. <laughs> oh, you really got to town on that washboard. Yep, I love the fast staccato rhythm it makes. It's, it is pretty good. But someday there'll be a, fa a fancy electrical machines that do it really good. Till then, though. Folks call me Washi, by the way. Hi, Washi, I'm Mar. See ya, Washi. Car 5251, huh? The hobo you met at the abandoned grocery store is slouching around and generally staring off into space. Hey there, Samuel. Mmm, hmm. How's it going? Mmm, 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 Doing things. Were you able to find any work? Mmm, 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 mmm. That's a shame. Mmm, 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 Right, don't let it get you down. Mmm, hmm. How's the camp treating ya? Mmm, 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 Yeah, it seems nice. Everyone's referring to you. Mmm, 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 That's great. Communities are important. Definitely sitting on an abandoned street corner for months on a stretch. Oh, mm hmm, nice, mm hmm, mm hmm. I don't suppose there's any chance of a punchline where you suddenly say something really elaborate and completely understandable, is there? Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, Yeah, just checking. <laughs> ah, that's nice. There's now zero risk of your knuckles seizing up due to the cold. It's Gus, the guy you met at the rain when you were in the Plunkett Street. Hello, Gus. Oh, hello there, Mar, I believe it was. That's right. Always a pleasure to have another run with a friendly acquaintance. It's nice that the rain cleared up. It is nice. I do enjoy the rain, but also enjoy dry clothing. So you're the kind of guy that's comfortable in any sort of weather, huh? Yes, I do my best. Can't stop a rain cloud from, by crying, after all. And in fact, when you get right down to it, pretty much anything that happens so a person can be considered weather of a sort. Huh, that's real philosophical. Oh, Gus says, if you can find the pleasure in any circumstance, then never be a sufferer of misfortune. Gosh. Goddamn, dude. This is a hobo lady you haven't met yet. Hello there. Well, hello there, dearie. I don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Veronica. Hi, I'm Mark. Can I offer you a cup of tea? It's homegrown, so to speak. You found tea leaves around here? Just just about any leaves can be tea leaves with the right attitude. I'm fine, thank you, though. I like your hat. I thank you. I grew it myself. The flowers? The whole thing. I'm trying to grow some socks as well, but they're much trickier. I can imagine. Well, good luck with that, Veronica. This is as cozy and invited as is possible for a barrel of burning garbage to be. This hobo is wearing a handmade tin foil crown. Hello there, you must be the Hobo King. The crown gave it away, I presume? Yep. Well, you were absolutely correct. I am the Hobo King. Though to foster a more familiar, I prefer my subjects to call me Johnny. <laughs> nice to meet you, Johnny. I'm Mar. What can I do for you, Mar? I've got a question. Where are you from? Hob Hobokin. Of course you are. <laughs> hey, don't touch that telephone. Royal use only. This phone is actually connected to anything. Don't let, the he don't let it hear you say that. <laughs> Crypto cryptography, huh? Oh, you haven't seen one of these in ages. Whatever it is. Bloodering array of partially redacted nonsense. The Owo King. It's not quite Owo. 
A hobo is flipping through a worn book, occasionally stopping to check the strange machine next to him and pencil some notes. Hi there. Hmm? Oh, hello. Must be new here. I don't think we've seen you around. Pleased to meet you. I'm Letters McCabe. Is there something I can assist you with? Why do they call you Letters? I'm an expert in... I'm an expert in micro crypto cryptography, aka hobo code. Co hobo code. Are you familiar with it? Hmm. Nope. What's that? It's a, it's a system of pictographic elements that can be written unobtrusively on walls or carved on fence posts. Or, <coughs> excuse me. They're traditionally used by hobos to leave messages for others. To mark a house where documents are charitable, for instance, or to warn of a vicious guard dog. That sort of thing. I'm working on expanding the system for more g general communications. That's pretty interesting. Is there anything else I can assist you? What's the book you're reading? This is a hobo code manual. I can teach you the basics if you'd like. Sure, that sounds useful. You spent 10 minutes or so going over the basics of hobo code with letters. He teaches you some of the most common glyphs. If you'd like to know more, just ask any hobos you meet. They're honor about an assist you learners. That's the hobo hobo that's the hobo hobo code code. Neat, thanks. What's all the stuff in this room? Stuff is a little over overboard of a overbroad of a topic for conversation. Thanks, letters. <laughs> What is this machine you're working on? This is an old naval radio encryptionograph from the Cola Wars. I'm trying to modify it to work with hobo code. Yes, it wasn't designed to handle a pictographic writing system, that's for certain. But if I can get to work, it should be very secure. A desktop radio. Hey, letters, just do this. It's a ham radio. What's it for? Listening to stuff about ham. Well, there you go. A ratty old shoebox is slouched in the corner. Hey, letters, what's in this old shoebox? Old shoes. You're welcome to them. You try to pick up the box, but you can barely lift them. Jeez, what kind of shoes are these? Hand-me-down boots. They've been passed from hobo to hobo for generations. Probably about 50 pounds of metal reinforcements on them by now. These boots have been regarded. These, these boots have been reinforced without regard for ergonomics. Well, let's see what they do. They probably make us stomp around really heavy, like. <laughs> kind of, I kind of like that. Where I kind of like, woo! Hey, letters, what is this thing? That's a teletype machine that we salvaged when we, they shut down one of the local post office branches for cutbacks. We patched it into the local telegraph network so we can communicate with some of the other hobo communities. That's some he This is some heavy-duty equipment. I mean, this is a naval cipher thing. This is some heavy-duty equipment you've got here. Yes, well, I'm not at liberty to discuss it in detail, but you understand, but secure lines of communication are going to be quite important if Johnny's plans are to come to the fruition. Okay, then. We got a lot of notebooks here. Did you write all these in code? I can't make out a single word. No, that's just my handwriting. <laughs> Say, letters, what's with this poster? These are some general purpose hobo code glyphs I'm working on. There's a bunch of them that are blacked out, though. Yeah, well, they're still experimental. So I decided it would be wise to take some precautions. What's all these looks? Welcome back! Oh, delicious, huh? What'd you have? Made this various types of codes and ciphers. Vigne Vigne I don't know how to pronounce that. Beaufort. Tristices on several variations of columnar. Ruben? Nice. Transposition, the classic Mormon jigsaw. I mean, German mix up code and so on. Interesting. There's a few books and old pictographic languages in there too. Fascinating stuff. Well, it's all Greek to me. Hey, letters, what's this contraption? That? That's just a radio. Alright. I said you're working on some kind of secret plan. Can he teach you some hobo code? Ah, oh, yes. According to local hobo code, I am, of course, obliged with this. But first, let me test you. Convince me of your word in this, and I'll grant you a boon. I'll get back to you on that. Oh, did he? He said he, he wouldn't say what it was, though. Certainly not. That information is mine alone to divulge, so will you? You are practically a stranger here. I apologize, but cannot jeopardize operational security. Okay, so we need a bamboozle. To get him to say anything. What about Grub? Oh, it's a bar. Due to supply chain difficulties, the Grub car is currently BYOG. Condiments are still available to camp residents. Bring your own Grub. There are ample condiments, but don't but you don't feel like taking any. <laughs> this guy's really jazzing up the place. 
Hi there, I'm Mar. Howdy, they call me 52T Thompson, or just 52 for short. Uh, is that because of the 52 white keys on the key piano? Nope. Wow, it's lucky they happened to find a piano for the camp. Oh, I brought this baby with me. On foot, how? Well, it took a few trips. <laughs> what? Did you bring each piano key separately? <laughs> Did you know any hobo code you could teach me? Sure thing, this one means arpeggio. Those two pointed ones are a crescendo and decrescendo, and this one here is a triple clef. Sweet. Let's learn more hobo code. Do you know any hobo code you can teach me? Sure, I know the word washboard, and uh, there's some words that kind of describe the sounds a washboard makes, but they aren't really useful as actual words. Well, that's a shame. Right, yeah, don't let it get you down. Well, anyway, you know any hobo codes? The fish is an old store seat out of the pocket and I draw some very small symbols for you to squint at. Can you teach some hobo code? We're just learning all hobo code from as many people as possible. And I'm sure there's like something that will come up with it. She rifles through her handbag for a moment and hands you an old sheet of notebook paper with some squiggly glyphs written on it. Thanks. Oh, well, let's look into the, the shut eye. Uh, well, can I talk to you yourself to learn some more? Oh, yeah. All right. Never mind. All right. We already learned something from him, if possible. Let's check out shut eye. Probably shouldn't mess around here. You'll wake people up. That's fair. Alright, so. Um. Let's sell that. We need 500 to let those, those dudes let us in. I look like Sheriff. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, we got a little bit more money. We're probably going to try to wander around and get in some fights to get some more stuff to sell. A pebble next to the sidewalk catches your eye. And using that exact same eye, you remember it's no ordinary pebble. It's a petrified espresso bean. Just need a toothpick in the mouth. Take that, bean. You stop dead in your tracks when you see three of those weird fishmen lurking in the mouth of an alley up ahead. They're peering around with, the, with their glistening, staring eyes and blurbing with ears quietly until one of them notices you. What even are you guys, Glurb? Evil? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Toss out a fishman, dealing 10 physical damage unless the malfunctions, which in case who knows. Well, let's use one, I guess. Oh! Looks like it had a, a dubious effect on me. Yeah, we're a fair bit stronger than we were at the beginning. I might say you reduce those chumps to chum, but despite that being pretty good fish pun, it would also imply the existence of much larger fishmen who would be attracted to the bait. I don't th you don't want to think about that. So me, a bucket of chum. This bucket considers a, fi a feast fit for a king, as long as it's the kind of... Ki some kind of disgusting fish kingdom and is thrown as a gorse toilet. <laughs> Fishman throwing spray. Ooh, cool.
<laughs> right. Yeah, you take the piece of candy out of a purse and tosses it into her mouth and per holds the purse out to you. One, one, sure, thanks, huh? Your purse is just entirely filled with salt, wolf, or butter taffy? Root beer taffy. I, I guess I did hear somewhere that goblins process sugar really effectively. Don't need as many vitamins as humans. Haha, <laughs> jealous? A little bit, yeah. As you walk past one of the ocean cities, many just use public urinals. Just wandering around grabbing free stuff. You're unexpectedly surrounded by three Glocklins, menacing playing their Glockenspiels at you, which is a real trick if you think about it. Hey, what gives? This is a muggery. V insist on it that you give us all your meat give. What, all of it? That's crazy. I guess that was a little extreme. Sa save V instead. Three meat? No. The goblins, the goblins scamper, one of them drops a piece of paper that appears to be an app to their hideout. If I would see some meat and Arlington grow stronger! Let's wander a little bit more. A thin, nervous man looking man in a suit stopped you. Hey, excuse me, do you fear for your safety in this dangerous city full of hoodlums and criminals? I'm afraid of anything, least of all death. She's, she is a flapper. She's very strong. Ain't afraid of anything. Least of all death. Oh, Carmen Dunskip, you're a killer, friend. Fortunately, I have something here I can justify it. What are you selling? Tiny pistols. Derringers. With one of these up your sleeve, in your sock, or wherever you can think to hide it. Personal self-defense is right at your fingertips. Huh. Are concealed pistols legal in this state? What? Probably. Sure. Hmm, how much? Yeah, it's not as good as... Alright, well, if you get m m murder, don't come crying to me unless it's to buy a Derringer. Yeah, we already have a better weapon than that. I mean, you have a matching person? Sure, here you go. Thank you kindly. This will be just the thing I need to assure that something will be on fire at some point in the future. Sure. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to Plunkett Street. And let's check our XP and all that fun stuff. We have 63 XP. We can get Bamboozle, which lets us, uh, do, like, skill checks, I think. And then we're gonna probably be saving our XP for either this or the upgrade to the orchestra thing. Let's see if we can sell some of the stuff we found. Let's see... Oh, we can sell this now. Sell that, we can sell these rolls. <clears throat> Homemade cookie, we can sell that. Hmm. Eh, we could probably just go fight some more stuff to get the rest of the money. You can just wander at your own leisure. An elderly man with thick with thick eyeglasses shovels up to you with a determined expression. Before you can react, he shoves some meat into your mouth and shouts in your ear. Operator, operator, get my worthless son online. <laughs> Mister, I'm not a payphone. That's what the last payphone said, and I'm not buying it. Let me talk to my f first luggin lugging her son. <sighs> bzz, bzz, I'm sorry, sir, the line is busy. Please try again later. <laughs> Bah, probably gabbing with those floozy girlfriends. Alright, cool. Thanks for the, the meat. We keep finding this stuff, which is nice. More more taffy. <laughs> she just has a lot of taffy in her in her bag. 
You notice a strangely discolored patch of curb next to a sewer grate. The concrete appears to have absorbed a significant quantity of magical sewer energy. <laughs> it's strange. Stone like this is normally found close to ley line intersections, and sewers and ley lines are very different things. Almost the opposite things. In alleyway, you encounter some poor street urchins struggling with their math homework. Unfortunately, I don't have the misquality to assist them with their math homework. <laughs> well, here's an unusual sight. Four Glockons are playing their Glockenspiels while doing some sort of traditional folk dance. It involves a lot of skipping and hopping and turning around in a square with precise timing, so they aren't really paying any attention to you or anything, really. It does look kind of fun, but you definitely don't know the steps, and you would only cause total chaos. It'd probably be simpler just to attack them, since a brawl would probably result anyway. Oh, there's a few of them, huh? Oh. A slap Happy Tentacle. Oh, was once to slap Gabby. Tentacles. Let's gamble with one of these these things. Okay, now we can kill off one of these other uh, goblins. Especially since that's gonna buff people. Let's uh, not. Okay, and you can finish off this one. Slap <laughs> You won, I'm not sure what you have against traditional folk dances, but you should put a stop to that one. Perfect for the heavily burdened music lover who doesn't have a hand free for a normal glockenspiel. <laughs> Glockenhosen. With the attached suspenders, these these rugged woolen pants also protect two very narrow strips of your torso. Got some meat, got some XP. Perfect. More taffy, thanks. I wonder if we can just sell the taffy. You, you, you come across a wall with a joke scrawled on it. It's only sort of ribald. Make it more ribald. You increase the ribaldity of the joke, and doing so increase the ambient ribaldity, ribaldity of the sur I'm guessing that means like crass or lewd or something. Well, let's see now how much we can, what we got going on. Let's see. We might hold on to that. For chum's sake. I'm gonna sell these. Maybe. Now it looks like we can't sell the various uh, crafting ingredients we keep getting, which is unfortunate. Hmm. Let's see how we're doing food-wise. At our, uh... You're level 6 due to the hobo alphabet. Let's see. Effects, potion, booze, food is... We have that for five more HP. If we lose the HP thing to get more moxie, we'd do more damage, but we don't really need more damage for most of the stuff we're dealing with right now, so. Let's wander some more. Hmm. 
Oh, this guy's still trying to sell us a Derringer. Well. We need to use up all these things anyway, so might as well try. Slap slap. Uh, we can uh, knock them out now. A Glocken Mallet Ball. Arlington grows stronger. Like one more good wanderer, like an encounter like that. You take a wrong turn into an underground coffee house just as just as a thinly mustachioed man demands any decent person to defend the, the formal vulgarity of Joyce's Ulysses. Moving to tears, the man kisses you on both cheeks, leaving wet mustache hairs on your skin. Oh god. You round a street corner and encounter a woman in a welding mask using Tightly focused magical fire to cut the fenders off a parked car. Hey, that isn't. I'm pretty sure that isn't your car. There's a polite cough behind you, and you turn to see a muscular woman in oil stained coveralls casually flipping. Rod wrench in one hand. Is this your car? Uh, no. That ain't your business either, so we should teach you a little lesson about minding your own business. You just said it isn't mine. We'll fight. Oh, there's a few, um. There's a few enemies here under the tentacle! Let's see who we gotta kill. Oh, we can kill them with like our, our just our attack. This is Zinc Rosie the Welder. Do not set Gabby on fire. Let's see. The wrenching will hurl itself for damage. Wetly slap Gabby for six sleaze damage. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's toot. I. Let's see. We can use the sword, the the the, the leaf sword, to finish them off. We'll toot at these two because that will easily finish them. And then we'll just sword them. Gabby can get the drop on the tentacle here, and I was gonna try to do damage to her instead. Flap slap! <laughs> Grease gun! Ooh, do you give plus two now? Ooh, wow. Arlington got quite a bit better now that I can just get plus twos. Spores! Concealing yourself behind the trash bin, you wait until the tin lizzies regain consciousness and limp away and quietly tail them to a back alley chop shop that presumably is their gang hideout. Back alley chop shop. <laughs> it's fun to say. Huntington has grown stronger. I'm just trying to get some meat. Oh, bo oh boy. Take that, bean. More, more tasty goodies. Okay, it's the, it's the seas again.
<laughs> okay, now she can flop slap and get this one down. You're gonna bonk the bird. Oh, the bird's left, that's okay. Not the bird! <laughs> Lock and brats, which is the food I have currently eaten, which is more HP. And some more meat. Let's see. We now have the 500. Hey, hi, hello. Hey, wow, look at it. Look at what? Gabby's skin, what? Gabby holds up an arm. Her skin does seem a little different, but it, like it's getting tougher and leatherier in places. Gabby is adapting to the, pro the prevalent conditions. Haha. <laughs> Gabby gains straight physical armor. Huh, I didn't know goblets could do that. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Alright. So now if we go back to the fridge factor, we can pay these people to load so we can get through, I think. Oh, well, we got, guess we have to fight these ones. Oh, there's a there's a, a tentacle that uh, wants to help. I guess. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That stuff we can sell. Alright. Fridge factory, go! Oh! I could use my Moxie to convince them to take less. You again? So you ready to join the party or what? Yeah, you're your party, huh? Clancy, quit it or I'm gonna slug you one right in the mush. Gee, mister, I'd love to join you, but, I, but I've never had that much scratch. Would you take a hundred? I... I wouldn't normally agree to that, but you seem like a good kid. Sure, why not? Yay! Here's your membership ring. He hands you a ring, and the whole group of monsters wander off, divvying up your meat as they go. You got the Fop Bum Egg ring. Huh? Is that your prediction is actually real? Fop Bum Egg? <laughs> you gain three, three to five extra meat after combat. Oh, that's actually not bad. So you're most of the combats. Don't give much more than that. That's a pretty big, pretty big, sizable increase. It's a refrigerator. It's a refrigerator truck, but not the kind you're probably thinking of. If two counts as a fleet, they have a whole fleet of these things. A pool of chemicals. There are weird flies buzzing around this barrel of frigid industrial waste. These barrels are rhymed with frost, but they but they rhyme with carols. Boxes of miscellaneous discarded industrial junk. Hmm, one of these co old coils is still in pretty good shape. What is that item? I made a charged refrigeration coil. If you can't figure out anything useful to do with it, you can probably sell it. There's a pretty flower growing out of this patch of frosty industrial waste. It's probably a metaphor for something you don't understand. <laughs> Thanks for the hand, tentacle? Question mark. An old toolbox has been left here to rest. See what's inside. We got an awl and a disposable ratchet. If you see a pointy bit of metal with a wooden handle, that's all. That's an all, folks. Oh God. <laughs> greatest trick the, the greatest trick the department of the marking department of Black and Decker ever pulled was convincing people these were single use. <laughs> Opening this door would make a lot of noise and draw a lot of attention. Actually, you don't actually know how to open it. Well, there are some refrigerators here. His workbench doesn't seem big enough for re 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 refrigerator repairs. What do you want to make? You have the following crafting materials. Energizing power, frosty flakes, two globules of glowing ooze. I need anarchist hardware for that. Uh, let's see. Radioactive solve. Slush, slush ball. Handmade pet pill. These, this might be useful. Oh, 
Oh, we can make all. We can just make all of these. Absolutely. I keep. I just found that stuff just laying around. Let's make a bunch of stuff. All right. Cool. A chest of tools for fixing upright refrigerators. Oh, hey, we got Anarchist hardware. Sweet. Next time we can make some fancy stuff then, maybe. The control booth is locked from the inside. Somebody's gonna be in real big trouble. <laughs> Looks like there's something going down over there. Hide and watch. It's all there, all 40 cases. It's all there, Gluck. You got the meat? Uh. Mr. Poindexter, what are you doing here? Surprise inspection. Oh, hmm, curious. What the heck? No time to check. Th no time to check this. Out. You should go see what's going on over yonder. There seems to be a bit of a standoff between the mob guys and the other ones. The scary top hat nerd stares at you with barely any expression on his face, apart from a faint sneer. It appears that we have an interloper, and you are. Puddin' tame martini. What's wrong with your hat? I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. It's all spooky and like You can see stars through it. I have no time for this nonsense. Mr. Gluck <laughs> Curious. Regardless, please dispatch a cinnaloper, Mr. Gluck. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> The top guy gives a taut nod that leaves the same space he came in, in a horrible, weird spiral of negative space. The weird shadow monster, as once a person turns to face you. Hello! <laughs> Shadows begin to gather around him. Abstract, menacing shapes. Hey, uh, hey, you mob guys, can I get you to give me a hand with this? Considering a new terrifying Mr. Gluck is between us and the exit, seems like we have no choice. Take Gluck on. <laughs> Jesus. Shadow Oliver Gluck. Shadowy slab. Cannot take more than five physical damage at a time. And that's why you do at things. Uh, let's let's kill this one since we can kill it with one of these. I have no AP. Oh my AP! Ooh, that was unsettling. We have plenty of items we can use. Um, we could use one of these to um, get two AP back and then kill off one of these things. Oh, that's gonna bop. That's gonna help. That's gonna bonk. That, that, this one is gonna bother me. So we're gonna swallow one of these pills. And we're gonna blast this thing to hell in the back. That guy's very dead. We are pretty powerful for for um, what we are right now. With the shadow creatures defeated, the two mob guys brush themselves off. Whew, this caper has me got me all balled up. And how, this whole scene is nutty as squirrel as a squirrel's mistress. <laughs> oh jeez. Come on, let's am scray. They tip their hats to you and make for the door. He mostly dissolved into a cloud of that weird shadow stuff, but there are a few objects on the ground. A pocket watch, a bank pouch, and an official looking document of some sort. It's just wrong. <laughs> 
bank pouch fool me any cash payments that's too small for a briefcase must be confined to a leather zipper pouch it's the law a legal document regarding an illegal establishment <laughs> you take a quick look at the document it turns out this gluck guy was the owner of the speakeasy and now you are maybe is this how deeds work well what do you know what's with this spooky cola over here oh huh the fridge is plugged in I don't know what it says experimental not for lunches this fridge has been fitted with an experimental automatic ice cube maker. Unfortunately, it's made one single gigantic ice cube that fills the entire fridge. I guess if you ever need a, bit, a block of ice as big as you are, here's where you can get it. This spooze looks dangerous, and it also appears to be tainted by some kind of sinister magical energy. You don't have to leave this. You don't have to leave this building to open your map, by the way. But I want to. Alright, back to Plunkett Street. As you're walking past the ocean. Oh, yep, we get some more uh, frosty flakes. Sandwich, April 18th. 1858, huh? What's that all about? A flattened sandwich has been carefully concealed in the folder for that date, so that's what the code was talking about. Let's see if there's any new things to look at. There's nothing left on the day except grease stains. <laughs> found something. The top story of that date is the Ocean City's comptroller's passing of an Oprah complicated sidewalk right-of-way policy that allowed street-side newspaper vending machines and limited the maximum amount width of newsstands to four feet. The story continues to say that the watchful eye ma management raised concerns about loss of revenue and the comptroller rated a vague promise to divert city funds to make up for any future shortfall. I'm really starting to enjoy doing this kind of research. <laughs> So we gain extra XP from learning from the newspaper thing. Looks like it worked out great for everyone. Alright. We found something interesting. This morning, a new sculpture was revealed in Goldthwaite Park, donated by Ocean City Comptroller Margaret Smudged. <laughs> the sculpture, which consists of five jagged pointed rocks arranged in a rough circle, has been variously described as avant-garde, thrillingly pointed, and fine, I guess. Wait, are you writing this down? Hi, Mom! Interested onlookers. Well, okay then. <laughs> kind of just looking around, see, because now that we have hobo knowledge, we can actually read some of the glyphs that are around, I've seen around uh, various places around town. I think the speakeasy has one too. Like, we already read this one. Sandwich. Speak easy, friend. The code says, grapes under here. Oh, we found floor grapes. <laughs> Fancy Dan wants some floor grapes. All right. Hello, it's you again. You find Oliver? Um, yes. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. Oliver's gone. The handoff was, went extremely bad. Badly. Yes, that too. You go over the events of the Fridge Factor. Fancy Dan makes a variety of faces at various points in your story because Fancy Dan is a good listener. Seems a deed. Hmm. It says here that ownership of the speakeasy is might could transfer to whoever has physical possession of this deed. Huh. Is that legal? None of this is legal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to warn the old boss, another one to celebrate the new one. Good idea. I guess we ought to change the place name. Well, Oliver's place is no longer Oliver's place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? I suppose that's right. Any well, you can go traditional, just like Mars Place, or something like hip, like the Purple Door, or something in incisive and not in regard, like hmm, noblesse oblige. The Purple Door is good. Oh, that was an example. You're the boss, not a business. 
to business! We make the beer in house, so that's safe, but we're out of everything else. And based on your story, I say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Join booze or mixers or garnishes, bring it back here. No, but you might check with Barnaby. Barnaby? Went to the milk guide side at the table. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. You might know where you can find what you're looking for. I found some floor grapes. Floor grapes, eh? Oh, when life's easy, floor grapes. Make floor wine, baby. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Alright, Barnaby. The lake is deep is deep enough to draw in dreams, not the sins of the grandfather. I see. I see. Alright, alright, cool. <laughs> well, probably the last thing we're gonna do with this stream is um We probably should end it now, but I'm gonna kinda talk to Jessica. I found the watch, it's complicated. I'd be more surprised if he told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump into the incursing machine. It's a pocket watch. It doesn't just incurse the thing and get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. Alright, we're gonna... You won't encounter, you won't encounter anything, but you will encounter so many spiders. Uh, what's this? I don't know if that does anything. Um... Okay, I'll just make sure I can continue where I left off here. Because we'll, we'll, we'll play this again on uh, Saturday during the afternoon. So. Alright, cool. Really fun game. I, I'm really enjoying this so far. I liked, I really enjoyed uh, the previous one, uh, West of Loathing. And I've dabbled with the uh, game that it's all based off of, which is Kingdom of Loathing, which I might try to get back, getting back into. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time playing this game, and I hope y'all will continue on the, the silly journey along with me. But for now, that is the end of the stream. Thanks, thank you, Nakura. Thank you, everyone else, for being here as well. Y'all are greatly appreciated. Let me turn the thingy on. Uh, so, next stream will be Saturday, unless something comes up, which will be uh, Wayward, this game, and then more uh, Minecraft with the new mod pack I started. So... If I don't see you then, I'll see you next time. But before that, let's see if I can find a, someone to raid. Let's see. Let's take a proper gander. Let's see. General recording stuff and aesthetics. Dwarf Fortress. Oh, I haven't seen what the new Dwarf Fortress uh, game looks like. So we're going to drop in and see Twitchy Charlie, who's also a sweetheart. So you should give them your attention and support as well. So I'm gonna end my stream and I'm gonna drop in and see Twitchy Charlie. Let me make sure I can find so so I'll see I'll see you there. And if I don't see you on Saturday, I'll see you next time. Have a great day and also Ventus, I hope you get better soon. See you later.